What's up guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Cobra Kai? Becoming the Dragon Warrior, Part 4. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Evan kept her eyes closed, thinking about what this victory meant for her and her teammates, so she couldn't afford to lose. Your victory is my victory. Devin whispered repeatedly as she walked towards the combat arena, ready to give her best. Johnny looked at Devin from afar and said, Miss Robinson, we are proud that you've made it to the final. No matter what happens, remember that you are fighting against the defender of the previous tournament, so you shouldn't show mercy. Yes, Sensei. Aisha nodded as she stepped into the arena, looking at Devin challengingly. You know how this goes, three points for the winner, ready. Ready, Bo, look at each other, Bo. Fight. Devin raised her guard and said, in a few years, I'm sure you'll be very strong, that is unless you give up after being defeated like I did with Samantha LaRusso. What she hated the most were people who gave up. If she had lost in this tournament, she would have doubled her efforts, and in the next year, she would have beaten everyone who had defeated her, proving that she was better than everyone thought. But in exchange for that, Devin had encountered many girls who gave up before even trying. Aisha looked at Devin and said, don't worry, I won't have to train much more to beat you. Then don't disappoint me. Devin exerted force in her limbs as each of her movements fell into sync with her mind. Aisha didn't want to wait, so she attacked directly. Every step she took brought her closer to her opponent, but Devin showed no signs of moving at any moment. At this scene, many in the audience became increasingly nervous, it seemed as if the difference in strength was insignificant for Devin. What is she doing? Eli couldn't understand what Devin was doing by not making any moves. On the sidelines, Johnny frowned, observing what Miss Lee was trying to do. But, just as Aisha's punch was about to make contact with Devin's chest, she finally made her move. She extended her right palm and delivered a strong blow to the lower part of her opponent's attack, much faster than Aisha was. To everyone's surprise, that collision of blows didn't end with Aisha's point, even though she was the one with more strength. Instead, as if the blows didn't affect her, Devin's body didn't retreat at all. It was as if Aisha didn't have the strength to make her move back at all. How can this be possible? This unimaginable scene left the audience stunned. How could it be that someone like Aisha's strength couldn't move Devin even an inch, who was obviously thinner and less muscular? Even Aisha's demeanor suddenly changed, and all that confidence vanished from her face. From what she could feel, Devin's palm hit much faster than her punch, and she could feel that her blow didn't hit her rival 100%. And in this case, she finally started to feel anxious. Devin looked at Aisha, who had a completely different expression than before, making it clear that she hadn't become a champion with just a year of casual training, but had been entering since Dash had proposed it to her. There's a difference between strength and skill. Now, Aisha didn't want to hear more words from Devin, who seemed to be teaching her things she didn't need. At that moment, she attacked again, but this was seen by Devin, and she knew what to do. She moved her hands, raising her defense, and from a tricky angle, Devin hit Aisha with her elbow where she couldn't defend herself, causing her to step back and show pain. Point. That's our champion. Victor shouted from the crowd, wanting to hit the guys who didn't believe in Devin from the beginning. Johnny looked at Aisha and shook his head, he couldn't deny that she was good, but Devin's level was something she couldn't surpass in less than a year of training, and with much less speed. She had strength, she could clearly be superior to Devin in that aspect, but that didn't mean she was superior. In this sense, things would be more complicated from now on after Devin showed her brutality. Come on, Aisha, you can do it. The referee looked at both competitors and asked, ready. Fight. Now. Aisha didn't want to give up without giving Devin a worthy fight, so she exploded in strength and fury at the same time. With a face wanting to win it all, Devin raised her hands again and looked at her rival without any kind of sentiment. Stronger and more lethal, this time she had to use all her strength in the attacks, to avoid being harmed and win the match faster. Being in distance with Aisha Devon struck quickly. Her fist hit Aisha's shoulder with force, causing the audience to become very excited about the dominance Devon Lee was displaying. Thud. And before the referee could signal a point, Devon turned around, and a high kick landed in Aisha's stomach while she was in the air. Ooh. The audience reacted to that hit, and everyone felt a bit sorry for Aisha, who hadn't been able to do anything so far against Devon's blows. Time. Johnny shouted as he saw Aisha being completely dominated by her opponent. The referee looked at Aisha and nodded, raising his hands, and each competitor returned to their sensei for a few short minutes. Johnny, seeing his only female student in the final, felt proud, but he understood perfectly what she was going through. He asked, what's going on, Miss Robinson? 
You're doing a great job, but you're losing in the mental game. She's too good, I can't do anything. Aisha said, feeling totally desperate. She felt ashamed for not being able to show her teammates how good she was at karate, and bring the trophy home. Miguel shook his head on his side and said, We all support you, so don't think about any kind of trophy and fight as best as you can. Everyone here trusts you regardless of the results. What you need to do is feel the fight and know that where you are, none of the girls besides you are facing someone who has been a champion many more times than any other woman. Eli looked at Johnny and didn't know if those were words of support or not, but they sounded quite good, so he said, Destroy your rival, Aisha, use your strength. Aisha looked at the expressions of her friends and nodded. She felt herself with competitive spirit, so after renewing her desire to keep fighting, she walked back onto the mat. Devon, who was waiting for her, raised her guard. Unlike Aisha, she was fighting for many different things. Her mother, who might lose her life in the operation scheduled in a few days, needs to see that trophy. She wants to show her that she is strong, and that she shouldn't worry about anything other than herself. A display of weakness should not be witnessed by her mother, so she couldn't afford to lose in this tournament. Besides, being the only defender of this tournament, she had to be ready to maintain the dojo's title, and never let it be forgotten. Thinking of Dash, who should be back, Devin couldn't allow herself to feel a sense of weakness. Ready. The referee looked at both competitors, and after knowing they were fine, he said, fight. Now. Facing Aisha's desperate attack, which was draining all her energy, Devin remained calm as her defensive moves continuously evolved, incorporating traces of attack when encountering her opponent's blows. Right now, she remembered when she faced her first opponent, who almost defeated her in her first championship. So now, she felt what she felt at that time, and couldn't allow herself to show weakness. The moment their blows connected, Devin's arm suddenly shook, lifting Aisha's arm into the air. Thud. The audience watched as Aisha's arms were raised in the air by Devin's defense, and with a final wobble, Devin jumped and struck Aisha's face, knocking her down completely. An absolute silence dominated the surroundings. No one could have imagined that Devin had improved so much in the last few years. And above all, how she had defeated a much larger and stronger opponent so easily. Well excellent. Mr. Kim looked open mouthed at Devin standing while receiving the trophy for the women's division. A second later, all the members of Sakura Bushido entered the arena to celebrate her fourth championship. Devin. 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 Daniel LaRusso looked at Devin's overwhelming victory and shook his head. Although Aisha made it to the final, experience is so much that I can't do anything throughout the whole match. Samantha looked at her friend leaving the arena and stood up. I'll be back in a moment. At this moment, she remembered when Devin defeated her in her first tournament. She wanted to keep competing and beat her in the next one, but after a lot of training, she began to focus on other things. Eventually, now being in high school, that karate feeling had returned to her veins, and she felt the need to train to see how far she could go. But she felt it was too late, seeing her former friend being defeated by Devin, who had beaten her no more than five years ago, was really overwhelming. That's why Samantha wanted Aisha not to feel overwhelmed, at least she owed her this for being a bad friend in the last year. Devin Lee, who had emerged victorious, looked at the huge trophy in her hands and smiled slightly. She had managed to win, so all she wanted to do was celebrate when Dash arrived, along with her mother. Shall we stay here until the final of the men's championship? Sophia, who held the trophy for Devin, looked at her friend and asked. Devin smiled slightly and said, out of respect, we should do it. Everyone stayed even though their dojos didn't pass the preliminaries. Looking around, Devin sighed and walked towards the bathrooms because she wanted some fresh air, and to send a message to her father about her victory. As she walked away, Mr. Kim was the only one who knew about Devin's concerns, so he didn't say much about her victory. For her, this was not a victory, it felt more like an obligation to show that she was okay when, in reality, she was devastated. While heading to the bathrooms, Devin ran into Samantha, who was on her way out, and she said, Devin, congratulations on your victory. Devin stopped and nodded, she had nothing to say, but just out of discomfort, she said, I thought you wouldn't come. Have you considered returning to karate? Maybe I will Samantha felt even more uncomfortable, so she said, so goodbye, have a nice day. Watching Samantha's back, Devin shook her head and entered the bathrooms. She wanted to talk to Devin and her father, so that's exactly what she would do. I'll be back this weekend, I wanted to do it earlier, but my flight got delayed. Devin heard Dash's cheerful voice and nodded while smiling. She had told him about her victory just as he had done a few weeks ago, so after bidding farewell, she hung up the call. When Devin returned, she found out that the winner was Miguel Diaz after a very evenly matched confrontation with Robbie Keane, who had been taken by Daniel LaRusso as his disciple. Many were already leaving, so after knowing that there was nothing more to do at this place, the students of Sakura Bushido passed by each sensei and greeted them. Congratulations on your victory sensei Johnny. I hope we can see each other next year said Mr. Kim, who approached with his students where the Cobra Kai members were. Hello. Devin shouted as she respectfully saluted Johnny, who was the sensei of the boy who won this year. Now. 
All the students of Sakura Bushido who participated this year bowed slightly in a greeting, surprising all the Cobra Kai members. They had never encountered such a refined situation. You have an amazing girl. Do you know anything about your champion? Donnie smiled uncomfortably as he leaned towards Mr. Kim's students. He had to better educate his students about respect. Mr. Kim smiled modestly and said, He'll be back in the next few days. He's returning from a competition in Japan, but I'm sure he'll be here for next year. Johnny nodded stiffly, and before Mr. Kim turned around, he shouted, Cobra Kai, salute. All the Cobra Kai students, who were startled by their sensei, immediately knew what was happening. So they bowed to the students of Sakura Bushido, who were about to leave. As Devin left, she briefly looked at Miguel and said, Don't let that local title get to your head. You'll have to prove you're worthy of it when you face Dash, who has defended it for five consecutive years now. I can't wait for that moment. Miguel smiled slightly, still somewhat affected by Devin's words, as if she wanted to say that he was only a champion due to Dash's absence. While everyone celebrated, Devin ran to the hospital to personally tell her mother that she had become the champion of the women's division. San Gabriel Hospital in a private room. Mom, I'm back. Devin entered the room and looked at her mother lying and watching TV. She had lost a lot of weight due to the medication she had been receiving, and the depression that came with her illness. Zoli looked at her daughter and said, Come here, dear. Did you get hurt? No one can hurt me, mom. Look at the trophy I won. Devin proudly showed her mother the trophy from the karate tournament, to prove that she had won even without being seen. You can't imagine how proud I am of you, my dear daughter. You are so strong and brave. Devin, who felt a lump in her throat, looked away. She didn't want to see her mother cry, so she looked at the TV and said, By the way, mom, Dash is back and will arrive as soon as he takes the next flight. Zoe smiled and nodded. Are you going to pick him up at the airport? Of course not. I heard that if a boyfriend is too clingy to the other, the relationship becomes a bit heavy. Devin confided in her mother about the new relationship she had with Dash. Now she needed her mother's advice. Zoe smiled upon hearing those words and jokingly said, But if you two have always been very clingy, I haven't seen a day when you're not together. But it feels different, Mom Devin whispered after realizing that she and Dash were now officially a couple. Don't be foolish and have a child at an early age, there are contraceptives, but before Zoe could continue with her jokes, Devin stopped her and said, enough of silly jokes. Do you want to see the photos I took at the tournament? Why not? Come on, lie down next to your mother. Zoe set aside the jokes and caressed her daughter as she showed her the pictures she had taken throughout her day. Mrs. Zoe knew it was wrong, well, the doctors had told her that even with all the resources in the world, the operation was guaranteed only half the success, which was all or nothing in the result. She wanted to live, but she couldn't act with her daughter, as if that could be fulfilled 100%. Like everyone, someday death would have to come to her, but in this situation, she still believed she wasn't ready. She still wanted to hug a grandchild, see her daughter get married, and die of old age with her husband. But in life, not everything is fulfilled, so now she would do everything possible to spend the time more comfortably with her daughter. That's the only thing she can do, can you walk properly now? At the top of a mountain, where a dojo teaching Miyagi do karate was located, Chosen looked at the young Dash, who had arrived at his doorstep in very bad condition. He had seen a change in his gaze, but he knew that Dash needed more time to breathe and release all his past bad experiences, just as he had done in the past. Dash turned his head, smiled faintly at Chosen's words, and said, Your medicines are good. Was your family an ninja or something? I've recovered very well, I'll get home much better than I had thought. Come, let's eat. I prepared my star dish. Dash stood up, walked towards the cabin where Chosen was sweating, and saw a simple table full of food. For many, the choice of food is something sacred. Some who do not know the effort behind it criticize the dishes or do not eat them simply because they wanted something else. However, he appreciated every grain of food with much love. He envied Devon a lot, and he had told her that. She could eat the dishes her mother prepared, and that was something invaluable. When he arrived here with his fears present, he learned many things from Chosen, a man who had overcome very deep and strong obstacles in life. In that first interaction he had with him, he thought it wouldn't be any different from the past, but he ended up surprised at how he had changed for the better. Not only had he overcome his dark past problems, which were darker than Dash had imagined, but he had found his own path, and now led a serene life. Are you going to eat? Chosen served him a large meat chop and smiled faintly, he, too, was living good days in the company of Dash, whom he felt the need to guide. Could it be destiny that sent this young man to him to guide him in his concerns? Chosen once dreamed of having a child after that night where he lost control of his emotions. He had thought of dying, and if it weren't for his sensei, who showed him the path of redemption, he wouldn't be here in this moment. Life may not be pleasant for everyone, but the important thing about it is to understand that in certain moments, occasions, or special situations is where you truly want to live. Dash, who was just learning all this, smiled, looked at the food on the table, and bowed to Chosen, saying, Thanks for the meal, who are you fighting with? 
After eating in silence for a few minutes, Chosen asked Dash a more personal question that he was curious about. Dash drank a glass of water and said, My girlfriend's mother is going to have surgery, and it costs a lot of money. Originally, I had a strong fight with my father when he refused to help someone who wasn't his family. That's why when I found out about a tournament where the prize is a large sum of money, I wanted to see if I could win something. My girlfriend's mother must not die. She is an excellent mother and deserves a peaceful death. I know what it feels like to be on the brink of death and feel alone, regretful, and afraid. Dash, as he said these words, smiled ironically and said, that's why Mrs. Lee must not die. She has to live many more years. Chosen nodded at Dash's words, and after thinking for a moment, he asked, do you know that we are just simple people trying to live in our own way? Problems and many other things accompany us every day. In that regard, do you really know that we don't have control? I know that then think about what you can do and have control over. Your girlfriend needs you more than ever now and after knowing the result of that operation. Chosen didn't want to see Dash on the wrong path. He was young and still had many things to experience. Devin was really going through a tough time, she, closer than anyone to her mother, must really be having a hard time. But Dash, with his face all beaten up, didn't want to give her such a pitiful image. So, he preferred to recover a bit to pretend that he hadn't been beaten up, even though he won this tournament. I'll be back in a few days. Being in this place has helped me a lot to maintain that peace I had been gathering for all these years. Dash secretly started devouring all the meat on the table. Chosen nodded and said, it's a shame you're injured. I could have taught you many things about your training in the doctrine of karate. Your words are more than enough. Besides, you could teach me more about your karate later. Dash, among all the karate senseis he had encountered, sympathized more with Chosen for his way of overcoming and living life, so he was grateful to have found him. After finishing the meal, they spent the afternoon talking about this place, and watched as Chosen taught karate to his students, who were of all ages and seemingly learned without any apparent purpose. Without a doubt, Dash knew he needed to live life better and be more mature with his audacious problems. There was no doubt that he was in a bad place, but over time, at least he knew he could control all that hidden pain. If Chosen could do it, he knew he would find a way to overcome it completely. Are you sure you don't want to come with me? You can teach karate at the dojo we trained at. You could even meet Daniel LaRusso and greet him. Don't you want to do that? Dash looked at Mr. Chosen with a teasing look. It's not the right time. I'll travel when you have a place to live, as you mentioned. I don't want to sleep on the couch, that would hurt my back. Chosen waved his hand carelessly. Dash grinned, looked at the sunset, and said, I'll buy a house, and you can live there. You'll have many young students, so as the new sensei, you'll guide us to new tournaments. You can come whenever you want, young Hale. Remember that, as long as you're not feeling well, you should set everything aside to focus on your well-being. Chosen's words were much more serious, he was a very tough man after all. Dash approached Chosen and cheerfully shook his hands. From now on, you're my second master. The first one taught me kung fu, and although he doesn't want us to call him master, we all do it secretly. You're my life master, Mr. Chosen. Chosen looked fierce at this moment, but he didn't say anything upon hearing Dash calling him a life master. He had lived a quite complicated life, and being called a master was nothing but annoying, especially when all he had done was crawl through life to reach where he was. It's better if you leave. The sooner, the better. Dash opened his eyes in surprise and murmured, isn't it because you're getting sentimental? We spent some weeks living together, but I don't think you're an old softy after all, I remember you made me buy several sacks of rice with the prize money. What sentimental old man would do that? What chosen couldn't stand were Dash's jokes, which were quite contrary to his tranquil life. After hearing those jokes again, he shook his head Dan, before Dash left, he brought out a huge stick wrapped in a blanket. You said you want a match with a bow, I have this one that's very special because I used it when I felt frustrated. It's of very good quality, take good care of it, and train until you break it. Chosen walked towards the cabin and pulled out a huge bow staff, that was similar to the weapon Dash should use to defeat his opponents in the tournament. Dash held the staff, now that he was walking with the help of a crutch, he thought it would be a good idea to use it as a cane. However, he refrained from making such a joke, fearing that Chosen would kick him off the mountain. After having lived here for some time, all that weight on Dash's chest began to fade much faster than he had thought, and it was all thanks to Chosen, who spoke a lot with him. During all this time, the only person Dash had entrusted his pain to was Devin, who was not near at the moment. Therefore, having someone like Chosen by his side is incredibly good due to all kinds of experiences he had with loneliness, pain, and anger. There were not many things Dash had learned from life, but he had learned a lot from his problems. According to Chosen's words, anger is fleeting, and it's always better to solve those problems by talking about them. It's good to distance oneself from people who cause anger, pain, or any other feeling that ends up making the whole day bitter. One is not obliged to please others, but to live life in the best possible way. Take care, kid. Solve those problems, and you'll live much better, Chosen said after seeing Dash admiring the bow staff. 
Dash smiled and nodded, walked towards where Elliot, who would help him carry his things, was, and after a longer farewell than he intended, he descended from the mountain. Wow, when I'm old, I'll move to a lonely place like this with my wife, you should consider the same, Elliot. We would live longer surrounded by so much nature, Dash said as he descended the stairs very lightly, despite having an injured foot. Dash, how are you? Since winning the tournament, Devon had only exchanged messages with Dash. Therefore, receiving a call from him now was quite surprising. Dash heard Devon's words and said, I'm fine. I just wanted to let you know that I'm about to land at the airport, so after arriving, I'll stop by my parents' place, and then I'll come to see you. Don't you want me to bring you things that can be bought? Did you think about that during the trip? Devon asked with a curious voice. Dash nodded, knowing that his idea of a gift was correct, and said, Of course, once I arrive, I'll give you that incredible gift. Then I'll wait for you with even more excitement. Do you want me to prepare a feast? Devon joked, as if she had ever cooked for anyone other than herself or her family. Dash thought about it and said, I'll arrive like a ghost, it's better if I surprise you. Later, I'll try to teach you a Japanese dish that Mr. Chosen told me about. Well, I'll patiently wait for that. After talking for a few more minutes, Dash hung up the call and sighed afterward. He deeply wished the best for Devon, he hoped she wouldn't have to feel something that, according to Chosen's words, would change her life. Elliot beside him, carrying the luggage, smiled and said, to be able to live on a mountain, we should first own it or a piece of it. Everything in the world today costs. I guess you're right, money is terrifying. After descending from the mountain, Dash took a taxi to the airport. Even though Mr. Chosen is a master of life, he didn't even take him down the mountain, something Dash reproached him a bit, but in the end, he forgave him. After taking the right flight, Dash spent a lot of time thinking to himself about what would happen, and how much he could be of help. In the end, the conclusion he came to was that, no matter what he did, any outcome was subject to two paths, and the only thing he could do was to be there for Devon. She didn't need a guardian angel, nor someone to take care of her like a child when she was very strong, even stronger than Dash himself. That's why he would just be by her side, giving her that small piece of support that everyone needs at some point in their life. Mid-flight, Dash, he thought Devon should be awake, decided to call. Upon landing at the airport, his father had reserved a car to take him directly home, making things much easier for him, since he didn't know his way around such places where he had little experience. Looking at him now, his appearance seemed ordinary, but beneath his clothes, sunglasses, and mask, there were still bruises that hadn't fully healed even after days of complete recovery. He also needed to walk with a Canadian-style adjustable hand cane, which provided the necessary support for him to walk more normally than he appeared. Have you taken a pain pill? Elliot, who was beside Dash, looked at him for a few seconds and asked. Dash nodded. He had to take anti-inflammatory pills and ones to alleviate the pain in his muscles that had been tormenting him after those fights. Many might not notice, but there were severe but not grave injuries that were quite evident. That was the first time he had been hurt in that way, which was very risky, because they could have easily broken a bone if, for some reason, he hadn't won the battle in the last attack. We've arrived Ash opened his eyes, looked to the side, and saw that the door next to where he was sitting had been opened, and he nodded. He wasn't used to this treatment, he was just a guy trying to find a way to fit into this new life. So, after getting out of the car, he thanked Elliot, who had taken care of him until now. Do you know if my father is at home? Elliot nodded and said, he's waiting for you in his office. As he headed to his father's office, Dash felt a bitter taste in his mouth. It was a wave of uncontrollable emotions that he was currently feeling. He couldn't make the pain disappear within him, so that's what burned him the most inside. Knock knock. Come in, it's open. Dash entered and saw his father, Frederick, sitting behind the desk. As always, he was looking at some documents, but he put everything down as soon as Dash entered. I'm back. It seems this time wasn't as easy as you thought, right? Frederick looked up, observing all those exposed marks on his son, and shook his head. Was it worth it? Dash sighed, sat down, and reached into his pocket to take out a bank card containing exactly $20 million, even after giving Santiago his share. Here, I want you to cover all the expenses for Mrs. So, and also the costs of Sakura Bushido. I want to pay you back for all that. Frederick sighed and said, I don't need money from my son, you can keep it. You've shown me that you can stand on your own, but now I have a question for you. Do you plan to continue like this? You taught me to survive in this way. All I'm doing is taking it to a level where I have chances. So, what will you do from now on? Dash remained silent, looked at his father, and said, I'll rest, go back to school when classes start, and before that, I'll be with Devon supporting her. Life is cruel, son. If you don't learn the easy way, you learn the hard way, and that's the only thing I wanted to teach you. You can't go around helping people, the world doesn't work that way. But my girlfriend's mother is not just anyone, can you understand that? Dash looked at his father more seriously, wanting to make it clear why he had been upset in the first place. I never expected you to have any treatment like other kids your age. 
I'm proud and grateful that you are my family, so I never complained about anything. Your absence was felt every day at home, I didn't care, I tried not to give it importance. But understand that I also have a limit. Frederick looked at his son in silence, nodded, and said, it's my fault. I wanted to teach you a life lesson, but I guess it wasn't the right time. I was insensitive, and I apologize. Take your money and go see Mrs. Lee before her surgery. Dash nodded, he wanted to cry, but wouldn't do it once again in front of his father. He didn't want to show himself vulnerable once again, so he left the room as soon as he said goodbye to his father. Being in the empty room, Frederick put his hands to his head and muttered, Even if it's just you, Dash, I'm sorry for all this you'll have everything I've achieved, you'll take care of all our belongings once we're gone, so this education was necessary. Now that he had heard his son's words, Frederick smiled, realizing that he had been a bad father all this time. He never had a fatherly figure that would raise him like a common child. His family had indoctrinated him to be the perfect successor, and that continued until he became what he is now. He had thought that as long as he did the same with one of his children but giving them more freedom, that same child would be stronger, perfect, and outstanding in life. But now that he thinks about it, he was naive not to have raised Ash better, who always pretended not to be so bad. I guess that was my mistake, Frederick murmured after being alone for some time. How are you? Dash, who hadn't rested after coming to see Devin and her family, stared at his girlfriend for a moment. Devin approached Dash, observed all the bruises on his face, and said, You mentioned it wouldn't be dangerous, what kind of pearls did you have to end up injured like this? The fights were in mixed martial arts, so we couldn't be scored with points. That means the winner was whoever surrendered or couldn't continue fighting. Dash smiled for a moment before stopping, seeing Devin's silent and concerned expression. While she looked at Dash's hands, she wanted to get angry, but she knew he didn't deserve it, especially now. You know this bothers me. I do, but I'm whole, and I brought you a gift. Dash raised a bag and handed it to Devin, who seemed very quiet because she saw him in that state. Devin smiled, walked with Dash to the entrance of the hospital, and said on the way, I thought you were invincible, but they really gave you a good beating. Well, I won the tournament, but they left me much worse than I am now, haha. <laughs> ha. Dash, who had set aside Devin's anger, smiled as they both walked towards Oli's room. Have you thought about what you'll tell my mom when she asks why you're like this? But she already knows, right? I'll just tell her I won the tournament, these injuries are trophies. Dash smiled as he touched Devin's head, who was mostly silent. Everything will be fine, I'm totally sure of that Devin stopped, took Dash's hand, and said in a low tone, I don't want to lose my mom. It's not going to happen. Dash took Devin's hands, made her look into his eyes, and whispered, she will recover, the best doctors will be taking care of her during the operation, so you shouldn't think about negative things. Alright Dash had no words of relief that could take away Devin's pain, that concern would be in her until the operation was over, and the result was known. That's why, in this situation, he could only stay by her side. Mr. Zack, who was about to look for his daughter, stood at the door, sighed, and murmured, I guess you're not as strong as you thought either. It's good that Dash has come back with the gift in her hands. Devin, sitting on the side of Dash to calm down a bit, opened it, and smiled upon seeing a golden frog. Caressing the golden frog, Devin asked Dash with confusion, what am I supposed to need a golden frog for? Well, they say that anyone who has a golden frog will enjoy good fortune Dash, who had closed eyes, opened them, looked at the golden frog, which was a golden figurine, and said, I bought it from some monks at the airport. Since I haven't checked the luggage, I couldn't take out the other things I bought for you, so that's one of the many gifts I got on this trip. He couldn't tell her that it was the only gift he had bought. After all, now that he thinks about it, it's not a very appropriate gift for a couple. No, I actually like it it looks a lot like you. Should I call it Dash? Devin stroked the head of the golden frog and joked for a while. Let's go see your mother now since you seem to be in a good mood. Dash walked towards the hospital room where Mrs. Lee was, who, after many scoldings for being so badly injured in the tournament, had left him alone. It was uncomfortable to have such a bad appearance, for that same reason, he didn't want to be seen like this. Still, following Mr. Chosen's words, he decided to come to greet them. Now that he had arrived, he learned that the operation could happen at any time, and they would have to wait some time to know if it was successful or not. That's how things were, so all that was left was to wait. After spending some time talking, Devin took him to her house because she wanted to change clothes, and needed to eat something real that wasn't from a vending machine. Dash took advantage of this to sleep, although he normally didn't sleep anywhere, it was different being at Devin's house, so he took the opportunity and fell into a deep sleep. When Dash woke up, some hours had passed. Instead of getting up immediately, he slowly opened his eyes and, knowing he was in Devin's room, made no movement. Devin, who had changed her clothes some time ago, was asleep beside him. She wanted to rest comfortably, at least before her mother's operation, and numb her depression for a few hours. She knew they needed many hours to find out if her mother would be saved, something that would drain everyone mentally. But it was something they had to endure as a family, and she knew it perfectly. 
Dash understood this to some extent, and he truly felt better accompanying Devon in this torment, than waiting in a different country for his wounds to heal. The wounds on his face weren't a big deal, everything else was temporary, and what mattered was sharing the bad moments as much as the good ones. Looking at his social media posts, Dash could see that he had quite a few followers, and their YouTube channel, which he had opened with Devon, where they taught kung fu moves with a chicken mask, had reached a million subscribers. I guess fighting in the middle of the night with a chicken mask, did catch everyone's attention, Dash smiled ironically, remembering how he had made the news, after helping the police catch a criminal who was fleeing. At that moment, he just extended his leg, causing the thief to fall, he had just finished recording a video, so he still had the chicken mask on. But what he didn't calculate at that moment was that the police were still far away, causing the thief to attack him upon realizing he had intervened in something he shouldn't have. Dash defended himself, and after the video went viral, all the people who knew the guy who taught kung fu with a chicken mask, were drawn to the channel to be part of martial arts. Following the comments on his latest video, Dash turned off his phone, and at that moment, he saw that Devin had woken up. Don't I snore when I sleep? Devin frowned and asked, do you? They say one changes as they grow up. It was a rhetorical question Devin smiled at Dash's jokes. She got up and started putting on her shoes. Are we leaving? I'm hungry, aren't you? Dash nodded as he put on his shoes and said, We need to drive, I might be badly injured, but I think I can handle it. Then let's go. Devin handed the crutch to Dash, who felt a bit embarrassed to walk with something like this, and after going down the stairs, they both went to eat. Throughout the day, they talked about many things, both needed to clear their minds, so that's exactly what they did. According to Devin's words, Dash realized how everything had turned out, and he was surprised to see the fights that had been uploaded to the internet. Miguel countering Daniel's kick, Devin's incredible fights, and the lamentable performance of Sakura Bushido's students with less than a year of experience. Although they reached a good position, not obtaining both championships was something that was a bit painful. Dash had taken care of recording a good training session for the return of the martial arts school, so as long as Chosen decided to come and teach, things would change. He would also take the next tournament more seriously, which would surely be more exciting than others. If there were more standout competitors, it meant that things would be much better. Josen's appearance at the Sakura Bushido Dojo would liven things up, balancing the scales in history, and Dash might feel more in tune with the story Daniel was living. After finishing talking, everyone returned to the hospital for the final farewell before the operation, and to await the results. This was an exceptional case, so the operation could last more than 10 hours, which was in itself a very long torture that everyone had to endure. Midway through the operation, Dash's family arrived, his father, who seemed indifferent before, had now decided to accompany Mr. Zack in his suffering. Elena, who hadn't seen her son since he returned from the tournament, accompanied him. She knew what Devon's family meant to him, so as a mother, she had to be there for him. Is it already more than 10 hours? Exactly almost 11 hours. Shouldn't we know the results by now? We just need to know if there will be any complications after the operation, that's the main thing, Frederick said as he analyzed the situation. At that moment, a group of tired looking doctors approached them, and they were the ones who had been operating on Mrs. Oli. What were the results? Zack approached the doctor, hoping for encouraging news. The head doctor approached everyone, and with seriousness but a hopeful tone, he said, the operation was a success, and we have managed to remove most of the tumor. However, we still face a crucial follow-up period to ensure there are no complications. Devin blinked a couple of times and said, that's good, right? The prognosis is encouraging, but we will need to carefully monitor her recovery in the coming weeks. The doctor, after sharing these words, retired to rest. So many hours of surgery were something few could endure, so now all he needed was to close his eyes for a few minutes before falling asleep anywhere else. That was good, there's very encouraging hope. Frederick smiled upon hearing those hopeful words. Things would now be continuous and involve a rigorous recovery process. For Devon, who had come to terms with the idea that her mother might recover, it was the best news she could get. She had been truly devastated before this, but now, knowing that there was a possibility of recovery, was all she needed to breathe more easily. Dash approached her and whispered, it was the golden frog, it brought us luck. Surely it was the frog, idiot. Devon smiled at Dash, seeing him so optimistic in the worst moments. After receiving the news, Elena left with Dash's siblings, and Frederick offered to stay for any updates throughout the rest of the night, so that Zack and Devon could rest properly. Initially, Zack refused, he owed a lot to Dash's family, so he didn't want to be more of a burden to them. Still, seeing the insistence, he couldn't help but thank them and rest for at least a few hours. All he had been doing was being in the hospital, taking care of his wife, and waiting for everything to be in order before the operation. Now that he knew the results, the breath of hope was so great that he could close his eyes for a good while. Alone in the hospital, Dash and Frederick looked into the distance at a girl playing with a teddy bear. Are you calmer now, son? Frederick looked at his son, who had been silent since everyone left, and asked. Dash nodded. 
He wouldn't be angry with his father forever, so he said, although everything is encouraging, it's still important to know if Mrs. Lee will fully recover. That's right, but at least she won't die. Frederick said as he checked the time on his watch. There were many things he wanted to talk to his son about, but he preferred to take it slow, as Elena had advised. Being alone with his father, Dash, he thought of something, said, Father, is there a possibility that we can buy a house near the Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School? For something specific. Well, I met a great karate master in Japan, who could teach very well to all the students representing the dojo in more important tournaments. It would be good to have him as a mentor at Sakura Bushido. Since he was a minor, even at almost 16, it was obvious that he needed his father's administration, who would use all his money for both investments, and to move the money more correctly. Now that he wants to be on good terms, Dash must make sure that his father helps him with some trivial things at least. We can do that, but do you know if it's worth it? Absolutely worth it. Do you remember Daniel LaRusso? It turns out that Sensei once fought to the death with him, now he has overcome the past, so it would be interesting to bring him. Frederick smiled slightly, although Dash didn't notice, it was obvious that he wasn't a saint either. But he liked the idea, so he mentioned that he would take care of it. By the way, how do you plan to participate in the nationals with your martial arts school? In a few years, I'll propose a tournament that involves schools from all over the country. Maybe that will work to qualify as a dojo if we achieve a good position. You must win, a good position doesn't precisely guarantee a pass. Frederick reminded him with a smile. Dash nodded and said, you're right. He may have his differences, but Frederick is still his father, and that wouldn't change for anything in the world. That's why Dash didn't want to continue with his tantrum, he wanted to be the one to step forward to change, since his father had apologized. The weather seemed quite gloomy today, the oppressive air could even be felt in the hospital corridors where Dash had many bad memories. It had been a week since Mrs. O's operation, and today, a comprehensive examination would be done to check how the recovery from the operation was going. She had awakened, but there was a certain slowness in understanding things, as they had been warned, and according to the doctors, the recovery process was very slow after she regained her memories very slowly. Sitting under a sakura tree, Devon was lost in her thoughts. Many days had passed, and she finally felt much calmer. After knowing that her mother had increasingly more chances of recovering, she shifted her attention to Dash, who was badly injured after that tournament, which she saw because he had recordings of the fights. She was extremely conflicted watching the fights because that was nothing but brutality, and everything they had learned was not taken into account for that tournament. But Devin knew that the tournament was open to martial arts, and knowing how much money he was paid as the winner, she didn't know to what extent it was wrong. She knew Dash had done it to help his family, his relationship with his father is special, and this is how they treated each other, so she understood little to comment on. Look, I bought some churros with chocolate. It was then that Dash's voice was heard behind her, and she smiled slightly. Are we going somewhere else? Devon looked back at Dash and asked confusedly, Don't you like this place? Seeing the pleasant place under the sakura tree, Devon didn't understand why Dash wanted to change places, and asked in confusion at such a strange scene. Of course, Dash couldn't tell her that this precise place is where he had once experienced death. Now that the memories are becoming increasingly clouded, he didn't remember it very accurately, but he did feel an air of death here. In general, I don't like hospitals, so I prefer not to see them Dash sat next to Devon, his gaze on the sakura tree, and he smiled. Things had changed since the last time, now, he didn't suffer from any lung problems, and he could breathe as well as a healthy athlete. Those nights of crying had ended, not entirely, but he knew they would end soon. What do you think about getting a tattoo on my arm? Devon looked at Dash and asked while eating the churros with chocolate, what do you have in mind? The sakura tree, I feel like my connection with those trees is very strong, Dash murmured, who actually wanted to get a tattoo on his entire arm. Isn't that a tattoo for women? Devon was indifferent to some things, and she couldn't deny that she wanted to see Dash with a tattoo, since it would look good. Dash showed his arm and said, I feel like it would look good, don't you think? You'd have to see it, take a photo of your arm and edit it with a program, that's what tattoo artists do nowadays to show you a model, and see if it would look good as the final result. Dash's eyes lifted in admiration, he had never thought about that, and now that Devon mentions it, he thinks it's very understandable. That's a good idea. He didn't know what he wanted to do in the future, but definitely, his life wouldn't be confined to an office. He wanted to feel free, even if it's living in the countryside, it has always been his wish to breathe freely. They'll do that checkup today, I hope mom can recover all her memories, Devon said a bit depressed but not sad. Dash nodded and said, she must remember that I'm your boyfriend, it would be terrible if she kicked me out of your house if I show up one day without warning. Maybe you deserve something like that. Devon said, imagining that funny scene. She liked Dash's personality, but it must be admitted that at times, he can be a bit annoying by not taking things as well as others considered important. School debates were the messiest, although in the end, Dash always did a great job, in the process, everything would get out of control. 
talking about some other trivial things, Dash and Devin went to listen to the news, and discovered that Mrs. Zhou's brain was responding well to the operation. It is true that other processes would take a long time to recover, but the most dangerous part had passed, so this was one of those rare cases of success. Everyone was happy about this, Dash kept saying that they owed it all to the Golden Frog, and since that day, he made sure to build a small temple for it inside Sakura Bushido, just a little place that would be difficult to find. Will you be able to join classes in the same year as me? Devin shouted in surprise upon learning that Dash would not be assigned a grade higher or lower than hers in high school. Now 16 years old, Dash, who was a year older than Devin, should have been a year ahead of her. However, due to losing a year when he was young, he ended up meeting her. Haha, <laughs> did you think I would disappear from your side? I'm like an ingrown toenail, the more I'm here, the more I'll stay. Dash shouted while trimming his fingernails. Devin looked at Dash, who lived in her house like a brother, shook her head, and focused on posting some photos on the internet. According to Dash, having a certain number of followers was good if you plan to reach a specific group of people in the future. Dash, who was momentarily silent, had an idea and said, By the way, I have the design for the tattoo I want, so I want you to take a look. Devin was surprised, before she could say anything, Dash showed her a photograph depicting the roots of a tree in black and white, which he understood to be a Sakura tree, like the Sakura Bushido logo. Do you know it looks more like a dry stick than a Sakura tree? Devin questioned, looking Dash in the eyes. Dash looked at the image again and asked, Do you think so too? I thought Eli was crazy, but now that you mention it, you have a point. Still, it looks good on my arm. When do you want to go? Now, Eli told me he'd be there to introduce me to the tattoo artist, so I want you to come with me. Dash said as he dragged Devin toward the door. Devin chuckled and asked, Would you cry when you get the tattoo? I'm a war machine, girl, I won't cry for something like that. Dash stopped and smiled arrogantly, he had pain under control, so he dismissed Devin's words. On the way, Devin played several videos from nearby cameras showing needles tattooing people's skin hundreds of times, making Dash increasingly nervous. He wasn't entirely calm. He was following Chosen's words, he said to take certain things to offer them to his pains and sorrows, so he believed that getting a tattoo would make things feel lighter inside him. Don't you want to get a tattoo? Dash smiled wickedly when asking this question. Devin noticed his gaze without even turning her head to Dash, but chose to ignore that question and said, getting a tattoo is not something to be taken lightly. I think my parents would kill me if I came home with a tattoo. That, or you're afraid of pain, Dash whispered as he parked the car outside the place Eli had recommended. Devin frowned, she didn't want to fall into Dash's subtle traps and said, if the tattoo artist does a good job, I'll consider it. Meanwhile, I'll be by your side supporting you. How sweet of you. Now, let's get down, the ink is drying. Eli, who had received a call a few days ago asking if he knew a good place for tattoos, recommended his friend, who had tattooed a beautiful falcon on him. Pain is training, you won't feel anything when the needle pierces your skin multiple times. Dash looked at Eli's new appearance, now calling himself Hawk, and said, I don't know which Eli I like more, I guess I'll stick with the current one, karate changed my life, you were right when you invited me before. Devin looked at Dash, and after exchanging greetings, everyone entered. She didn't have much to say about Eli, who had radically changed his personality. This is Dash, he just came from Japan and kicked everyone's ass in the tournament, Eli boasted to the tattoo artist, who seemed to be in an astral journey. Dash, with his arm extended towards the tattoo artist, looked at Devin, who was taking photos, and said, It doesn't hurt, I can assure you. I told you, pain is only in the mind, Eli said, watching as Dash got an incredible tattoo of a dry tree. Devin silently laughed, looked at Dash, and from a distance, knew that he was enduring the pain he was feeling right now. In a few hours, the pain began to decrease, and the tattoo was completed. Dash had a hard time hiding the pain, but in the end, he was fine. So, after pain, he went with Devin to spend the rest of the day in a more relaxed way. It had been a while since he went out, so appreciating the scenery was, he had invited Mr. Chosen to teach at Sakura Bushido, after his father got him a house. He had been thinking about it a lot, and it seemed like a good idea, so he decided to insist in the end. But he also wanted to hear Devin's thoughts. She was his girlfriend and a trusted companion to whom he could tell everything he thought, so it would be a good idea to hear what she thought. Now that I know the whole story, wouldn't things heat up more when Mr. LaRusso sees Mr. Chosen, with whom he had a lifier death duel in his youth? Devin looked at Dash as if to make sure he understood what was happening. Dash raised a thumb and said, You've understood it perfectly, but it won't be as dramatic as with Daniel's relationship with Cobra Kai. Mr. Chosen is now a man of peace, and I'm sure he wants to be on good terms with Daniel. That Cobra Kai and Miyagi do had their problems was something Devin could understand to a certain extent, but now that Sakura Bushido was joining the game, it was both boring and silly. Dash lowered his voice and said, although in a way, it's a good idea to stay close, I'm sure the bomb will eventually explode with that rivalry that is being taken further and further. Why exactly should we do that? Devin looked at Dash with confusion. 
Why should other people's problems be their problems? Dash thought for a moment and said, we go to the same school. If these two dojos start showing rivalry, things will get more and more out of control. At some point, they could even ruin the reputation of karate, which has gained a lot of fame so far. Now it makes much more sense. But wouldn't it be better for the adults to solve all their problems before that happens? Devon didn't understand what the big deal was. Dash then smiled. That's why I bring in Mr. Chosen. He'll resolve any differences with Mr. Johnny and Daniel, only then would we have a much healthier tournament. Certainly, this could have ended from the beginning, but if things continue to escalate in this way, everything could go out of control at some point. Devon agreed with Dash, so both discussed Mr. Chosen before deciding to go back home. Things were getting interesting, but now with a national tournament in which Dash would participate, it would be good to have a local competition to form a good team and participate nationally. One step closer to success a few days later, Dash knew that Mr. Chosen had landed at the airport, and had been taken directly to the house where he would live from now on. That's why he immediately dragged Devon to greet him, betting that he would be a great sensei for Sakura Bushido. Have you had a good trip? Dash walked towards where Mr. Chosen was and greeted him with a hug, as he saw him so joyfully coming out of the house. Traveling by plane has always been comfortable, especially in first class seats, hahaha. <laughs> Chosen said while greeting Dash and inviting him and Devon inside. Throughout the day, they talked about what they would do and the many things that would change. Although Chosen wanted to give Daniel a good scare after learning that he was at war with Cobra Kai, Dash told him it wasn't the right time yet. Gather everyone. Dash, who entered the dojo, looked at the new as well as the veteran students. All those who had spent a year training in Sakuta Bushido had been promoted, but that didn't mean they were the best. As for the new students, they were all waiting while watching the scene unfold. Is he Dash Hale? One of the new students looked at the tall guy who had entered and admired how strong he seemed. I heard he's a five-time All-Valley champion. Many say he could have won last year's tournament, if he hadn't gone to Japan to participate in another tournament, which he, by the way, won. A bespectacled guy nodded and said, let's just watch the show, it's bound to get more exciting now. Formation. Yes. The dojo had undergone significant changes, allowing both veteran and new students to fit in a single space. This would make things easier for Dash, who had a lot to say and didn't want to speak in three different places. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on your participation in the All-Valley Tournament. Although the male competition was a complete disappointment, in the female division, Devon Lee honored us with her great victory. It was a complete disgrace. Victor shouted, wanting the young ones to be reprimanded for the terrible defeat they had suffered from equally inexperienced students. Liam, among the crowd, smiled sheepishly. He knew he could have done more, but it turned out differently, so he had resolved to train more seriously from now on, his big goal for this year. Can you close your mouth? We're going to get punished with more training, and tomorrow I have gym class at school, Victor raised his hands innocently and said, a complete dishonor. Dash sighed, walked in front of all Sakura Bushido students, and said, now that we've shown how shameful a defeat is, I want to ask you something. Why did we lose in the male division? They were worse in the tournament. At that moment, a voice in the group of new students spoke up, and everyone turned their heads to the guy in the crowd. Dimitri. Dash looked at the guy who was Eli's friend, and was surprised to see him among the new students. Well, I'm here to see if the classes are worth the exorbitant price they cost, since the first class is free, right? Dimitri looked at Dash and smiled, but after seeing that more than a hundred people were staring at him silently, he felt embarrassed. Dash sighed, refocused on what he was saying, and shouted, We lost because we don't have a hunger for victory. For years, we haven't felt the desire to win because you've always considered yourselves winners. Your victory is my victory. Dash pointed to those words written on the wall and said, that applies to people who actually strive for their victory, not for someone who simply allows themselves to be beaten and defeated in front of so many people. We've been winners since the dojo was formed, maybe not in the same division consecutively, but we have enjoyed continuous victories. This has filled your brains with an unbearable sense of peace. You are not winners if you don't fight in tournaments with the intention of winning. Upon hearing all these words, even the veterans who were not allowed to participate in the tournament fell silent. Even the new ones, Dimitri saw a seriousness in Dash's words that he couldn't replicate even if he joked. Everyone understood that Sakura Bushido enjoyed many victories in local, international, and national tournaments. However, everyone knew that those tournaments were mostly Dash Hale and Devon Lee, who were the first students of Mr. Kim. Some had won different divisions in different tournaments, but that didn't mean they would be winners for life. If you want to win, you need to learn, and that's what was done in Sakura Bushido. Many failed to understand what I mean. We're not angry about your defeat, but about your will. Why did you enter a tournament where you wouldn't give 100% of your abilities? Didn't anyone want to lift the winner's trophy? Dash looked at the students who had been promoted and said, I fought until my bones broke, my muscles bled, and my knuckles shattered. None of you can understand what that means without fighting for real. Are you filming a movie? 
Dimitri heard Dash's speech and was about to say something when the lights suddenly went out. This fight must not leave Sakura Bushido. In the private tournament in Japan, as the winner, I was privileged to have these fights, but they must not be posted anywhere foolish. By the time Dash's words ended, a projector played a video of Dash's last fight where the three finalists fought. Everyone who was scared suddenly fixed their eyes on the playing video. They all saw how the fight unfolded, and upon seeing the Sakura Bushido logo on the fighter's back with the face censored, they realized that it was Dash who was fighting. Devon, who had watched all the fights, frowned. Those fights were brutal, but that's how mixed martial arts tournaments work, with the only difference being that in the tournament Dash won, there are no points. As the fight went on, Dash smiled slightly and said, Not everyone is ready to harness the full capabilities of their body, but they must understand what it means to carry the Sakura Bushido logo on their backs. Do you understand now? Yes, Sensei. Did they just call him Sensei? Dimitri, who was still stunned by the fight they had just seen, asked confused. Don't you see the belt around his waist? He has the right to teach, so he's Sensei. I guess we didn't just watch the same fight, I didn't mean that, congratulations once again to the students who have completed a full year of training at Sakura Bushido. Even if you don't realize it, we are proud of your perseverance, and we just want to convey that if you compete with Sakura Bushido, fight until your teeth crack. Yes Sensei. Devon, who was by the side, smiled. She could see the serious looks on everyone's faces, and knew that Dash's speeches always proved effective for those who listened. Now with morale boosted, it was time to announce the new changes that would be made in the dojo, both in training and schedules. Now we will announce the changes in Sakura Bushido. Pay close attention as this will influence the future. Devon handed a pair of eyes to Dash, who was better at communicating. After finishing this attempt at motivation, Dash moved on to the next change that would happen in this martial arts school and said, Now, everyone knows that Kung Fu is taught here, so you must be aware that within Kung Fu, there are branches of Jai Jitsu, Karate, Fist Strikes, and techniques for subduing the enemy. When everyone heard this, they nodded. Many had focused more on Karate because it was more famous than other deeper styles, and much easier to learn. But most knew that martial arts make up the entire set of Kung Fu, so they listened carefully to the explanation. Very well, precisely because of that, the Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School will be divided into two. One will only teach karate, and for those who want to continue with training, they can move on to the next level, where they will be taught real kung fu. With this, Dash did not want to separate the classes, but create subdivisions where each would learn through a process, and he said, for that reason, this school will be divided into floors. The first will focus on jiu-jitsu, the second on karate, and the third on full kung fu. Everyone can learn martial arts in a few weeks, but becoming an expert takes years of training, and you will understand the difference as you advance in classes. Now that Sakura Bushido had more than a hundred students, more teachers have been hired to teach Jiu-Jitsu, others to teach the use of training tools, and obviously, Mr. Kim, who was the head teacher. Looking at the scattered students, Dash then said, Now, it is not mandatory to learn everything that will be taught here, and everyone is free to pursue what they want to achieve. If you are looking for self-defense, karate is the most suitable thing you can find as it is easy and effective. However, remember that a good fight is one that is avoided at all costs, although you must also remember that not in all situations can a fight be avoided. After finishing what he wanted to say, Dash pointed towards the door where a figure was standing and said, I present to you Sensei Chosen Taguchi, the mentor you will have from now on to learn karate. All new recruits will learn karate from Sensei Chosen, and strictly follow his teachings. Many of you know Mr. LaRusso, besides selling cars, he now seems to want to open his own karate dojo. What you don't know is that this gentleman understands the same martial art in depth, much deeper, I would say, so you will be in good hands. Chosen smiled at seeing all the students in this beautiful dojo. He had heard Dash boast, but it is truly a nice place where he could clear his mind and find new purposes. Will you not pay your respects? Devin shouted, bringing everyone back from their thoughts. Greetings, Sensei. Chosen nodded and said, you have a good leader, one who cares a lot about you, and that is good. Now, let me be your sensei for today, and let's see how well or how poorly you are. When Dash assigned the class to Chosen, he walked alongside Devon, and they formed with the other students who were waiting to hear the class of the new sensei, who being Japanese, promised a lot in his classes. I want you to sit properly depending on your stay in the dojo, your skills, and experience, the serene Chosen said briefly, and in an instant, all the students moved. According to their experience in following traditions, lower-ranked students sit near the main entrance to quickly deal with any intruders, and protect the dojo. Higher-ranked students sit far from the main entrance. This positioning is to protect the highest-ranking person in the dojo. On the right side were Dash followed by Devon, while on the other side, the new students and those who had been training for no more than a year sat. Seeing how organized everyone was, Chosen nodded in approval. Very well, that is perfect. Everyone has decided to learn martial arts for a unique reason, respect, honor, trend, pride. In the end, it doesn't matter why you are here, but what you will do by learning martial arts. 
Mr. Chosen had learned a lot from life. For this reason, he understood things that young people didn't know and wanted to share in this first class with them. Today, I want to share with you an important part of my life, an experience that marked me deeply and led me on a path of reflection, growth, and redemption. After a fight that left scars on my soul, I experienced overwhelming shame. At that moment, the desire to leave this world invaded me, but it was my uncle who, with wisdom and compassion, rescued me from the shadows of despair. He not only saved me physically, but also gave me an invaluable opportunity. The chance to prove myself. I decided to dedicate the rest of my life to doing just that. Demonstrating that I could overcome my weaknesses, face my mistakes, and turn shame into strength. The path was not easy, but each challenge taught me crucial lessons about humility, perseverance, and authenticity. Today, I am here as your instructor to share with you not only the techniques of karate, but also the life lessons I learned throughout my journey. Regret, dear students, is a constant companion in our lives chosen paused and, after catching his breath, said, we all make mistakes, face defeats, and find ourselves in situations that make us question our own worth. However, what really matters is how we respond to these tests. Do we let ourselves be consumed by regret and shame, or do we use those experiences to grow and strengthen ourselves? The true essence of karate goes beyond combat techniques. It is about forging character, becoming resilient and compassionate individuals. I learned that regret can be a rigorous teacher, but it can also be the catalyst for profound transformation. It is not just about overcoming our physical limitations, but confronting our internal weaknesses, facing our shadows, and turning them into light. Now that you will be my students, I invite you to embrace every challenge, learn from every fall, and turn regret into an opportunity to grow. Through karate, we can discover the path to personal redemption, to building a strong and balanced character. In this dojo, we not only here, we are all learners, we all make mistakes, but what really matters is the willingness to learn and improve. May the path of karate guide us towards authenticity, personal overcoming, and an understanding that, in every regret, lies the seed of positive transformation. I am here as living proof that even in the darkest moments, we can find the strength to be reborn. Let us continue this journey together, learning not only to defend ourselves, but also to welcome to Sakura Bushido, Sensei. All students stood up and bowed respectfully towards Chosen, who then began the class in such a powerful way that many couldn't walk even after resting for more than half an hour. Is he teaching us to break bones in our first class? I thought the meaning of his words at the beginning was about integrity and being a better person. Now, does he want us to become criminals? Dimitri, who had only come to this dojo after seeing Sakura Bushido's history, was very impressed and said, This place even has bathtubs. I don't think what they charge is enough even to cover this. How do they finance it? Are you new? Victor smiled and said, The dojo is Dash's. His father built it, and with the money from the tournaments he has won, they have financed this place. Moreover, paying for this place for our dear leader's family is more than easy. This dojo is not for stealing money. The longer you're here, the more privileges you have. You can even earn money, I work on weekends cleaning the place, and they pay me more than they should. The guy said as he came out of the shower. Dimitri nodded, he had read the terms and knew that this place didn't want intruders. That is, people who join for less than a year just to experience. It's a good place, but I still can't feel all that passion that many feel being here. Dimitri murmured, and knowing that Mr. LaRusso would teach the same as chosen and also for free, he wanted to try those classes as well. That class was profound, now that we have a new teacher, shouldn't we buy him something? Dash asked while walking much better than a few months ago. Devon, who was putting on a hat because of the cold, said, Do you want to buy him wine? They say the Japanese love alcohol, that could work. We'll do that, besides that, do you want to go on a date? Months have passed since Dash had returned, and now it was time to go back to school. By then, he was already 17 years old, and Devon was 16. Mrs. Zoe's recovery was ongoing, but she was much better, and things at the martial arts school were flowing more smoothly after the changes that had been made. Having overcome many past issues, Dash believed he was better than ever, now fighting not just for himself, but also for those around him. Hey Dash, did you see Mr. LaRusso's video presenting his Miyagi Do Dojo to the public? Perhaps due to being tired lately, Dash didn't hear that question, even though he was practically next to Devin, who was browsing some things online. Now that Mr. LaRusso had embraced the role of a hero in trying to stop Cobra Kai's advance, things were getting more interesting, but Dash wasn't very attached to those developments. For now, their focus as a dojo was on participating in the Senkai Tenkai tournament, after winning the national dojo tournament scheduled for later this year. These tournaments, along with the Olympics, were the only ones Dash hadn't participated in, and he really wanted to prepare for this competition. Are you listening to me? At that moment, Dash looked up to see Devin paying attention, and he said, Do you really think Miyagi-Do will have students despite its results? Everyone who wanted to start with karate has joined Sakura Bushido or gone to Cobra Kai. It's really tough for that dojo to grow without the winning streak we had when we started. 
At the same time Dash gave his response. The waiter from the restaurant where they were sitting approached with their food, and after seeing who was sitting there, he said, Oh, you Mrs. Devon, congratulations on your victory in the All-Valley Tournament. Devon was surprised that someone recognized her, as it wasn't a common occurrence. She nodded with a smile and said, Thank you. Haven't you participated in international tournaments? The last time I saw you compete was in Japan. Dash raised his head and looked at the waiter, as if seeking an answer to who this guy was, but not finding anything, he asked, Who are you? The waiter modestly smiled and said, I have a cousin in a pretty important dojo in their local area. He was close to winning an international tournament, but lost because he disguised himself in a match. You should know the name of his dojo, I remember it was called Wasabi Warriors Dash, it didn't remember that name, lowered his voice and asked Devin, do you remember a dojo with that name? Isn't that the one you defeated that year? Devin asked, slightly surprised at Dash's amnesia, wondering if it was due to the blows from training. Seeing Devin's fierce gaze fixed on him, Dash turned to the waiter and nodded. Now I remember, Wasabi Warriors. Do you know if they will participate in the national dojo tournament? I'm not aware of that, but if you guys are there, my cousin would surely want to fight you again. Plus, now that he has a girlfriend, I'm sure he'll want to beat Mrs. Devon. Devon was once again surprised, she didn't think of herself as someone to be defeated by other girls, which actually made her happy. Not that she wasn't a good fighter, but normally, apart from tournaments, she didn't engage in any other fights, and had little interaction with other participants. This was a rule of Sakura Bushido, none of the members got involved in street fights, as it meant expulsion if not justifiable. Only in special cases did they engage in fights, but things were well controlled. Enjoy your meal, dessert is on the house. The waiter smiled slightly, and after bowing, he returned to work. Is it the guy with the abnormal strength from Wasabi Warriors? Dash recalled a bit about that tournament and nodded, knowing he was a dangerous opponent if he took fights more seriously. Well, I remember something like that during the meal, they talked about many things unrelated to martial arts. They didn't want to dedicate all their time to just one thing, so in their free time, they watched TV shows and movies. After finishing their meal, Dash left a generous tip to indirectly pay for the dessert they were treated to, and after that, they both walked. Hey Dash, there's a beach party, want to come? It wouldn't be a party without your presence, buddy. Victor's voice came from the call, and Dash, who was about to return home with Devin, asked, Do you want to go? Sure, it's been a while since we've been out so freely, so it would be fun. Lately, they had been away from rigorous training, not because they weren't interested or were slowly moving away from martial arts, but because there came a point where they didn't need to train much. According to Master Chosen, conditioning the body was good, surely, training too hard wouldn't bring good results other than damage at an early age, and they were still young. Following this advice, Anton and Devon trained more leisurely to focus on other things besides martial arts. As they headed to the beach, Dash looked at the passage through the car window for a few brief seconds before focusing his vision on the road. He had been through a lot, and his goals, which had now been fulfilled, had taken a back seat. He had locked himself into a training circle for five years, and now that he had proven he could be in the top for many years, there was nothing else he wanted to prove to the world. I've always had a very respectful feeling for the sea, haven't you? Dash, who parked his car near the beach, looked at Devon, who was silently gazing at the ocean waves. It's beautiful, I just feel that. Over here, Dash. Dash looked at the dojo guys and smiled to see that he now unconsciously had many friends. It was never his intention, but he felt happy to have progressed. Dash and Devon sat by a bonfire, while the others played strength games in the sand. Have you heard this? The biggest dojo fight in the country is about to happen, and we must be prepared. Victor shouted, being the elder guide of all the young Sakura Bushido students who were looking at him with hopeful eyes. Who will take the glory? Sakura Bushido. Us. Devon observed all the commotion and asked, Are you sure it's okay for that fool to get the new students excited when they might not even participate? At least they'll train harder, the competition is increasing, so it's a good idea for them to train more to reach their goals. Sasha waved her hand while sipping an alcoholic drink. Are you drinking? Dash opened his eyes and justified, there's no drink other than beer, I was really looking for grape juice, but didn't find anything in the cooler. Let's take down Cobra. Yeah. Victor, shut your damn mouth, aren't they drinking something other than alcohol? Devon shot Victor a fierce look, he was now a bit drunk. Miss Devon, to hell with Sakura Bushido. Listen up, their kicks are so fierce they'll leave you unconscious for a whole week without realizing it. Come on, Devon, kick my face and show the young ones how good you are. Mateo widened his eyes and shouted, Victor, you idiot, he's going to kill you. Why not go for a walk instead? Dash signaled for everyone to keep the idiot away from Victor, who had lost his mind. I want someone to hit me. This full after leaving the party where Devon ended up drinking the rest of Dash's beer, they both remained silent, watching the sunset. She tried to read some entertainment news on her phone, but she couldn't take her attention away from the atmosphere. She felt nervous when Dash wasn't by her side, but when he was, she became even more nervous. 
This was a frustrating feeling because it's not like they were strangers. She had always wanted to act like a good girlfriend, but when she tried to, she still remained herself. This feeling was very annoying, after thinking a lot, she believed something was wrong, something she didn't understand. Miss Devon, don't tell me you're nervous in your boyfriend's embrace. Dash looked at her with a calm expression. Devon smiled a bit and said, I still don't know how boyfriends act, do you have any idea? I think we've been acting like boyfriends for a long time, even though we were friends before, we've always taken care of each other. Dash said, thinking about it a bit. To be honest, that feeling of wanting Devon had arisen innocently within his heart, and the only reason he took the first step, was that his friendly relationship with Devon would no longer be pure, if he had feelings for her. No matter what would happen afterward, he would prefer to distance himself if Devon didn't feel the same way, and that was only out of discomfort. But she did feel the same way, she felt the same, and they became a couple despite still knowing what it really meant. Dash was attentive to Devon's likes, bought her many things, and took care of anything that happened to her. He wasn't invasive, kept his distance, and liked to be there for her when she needed him. Devon did exactly the same. They related to each other in that way, and really, now that they think about it, they've always been very attentive. Don't you think we should kiss to break the tension? Devon grunted at Dash's silly smile, and although they didn't kiss frequently, it wasn't something they had never done before, so she took the first step and held Dash's cheeks, he never thought Devon would take the first step. Feeling Devon's moist lips, Dash opened his eyes, but as he felt extremely good, he began to respond to the kiss. Devon, who didn't know how long she had been kissing Dash, pulled back surprise. Maybe she didn't have much experience with kisses because she rarely kissed Dash, but responding to that strange sensation in her body, she discovered that it felt very good. No matter how we do it, let's keep being ourselves, Dash said as he hugged Devon, paying little attention to not being that typical couple with his girlfriend. Devon looked down, saw Dash's face, and smiled slightly. She thought the same way, and she was glad that he did too, so putting aside those thoughts, she started talking about other things. Alright, guys, as your dear friend Victor posted a lot of nonsense in the group chat, we've decided to spend this weekend here at the beach. You all have your own rooms, so enjoy yourselves. Dash said, opening his hands as if he were tour guide. Chosen, who was in swimwear, looked at his students and said, Remember, guys, enter the pool until you can't move a bone. Yes, sensei. Mr. Kim, standing under an umbrella, looked at the kids and said, This isn't the beach, it would have been more economical to take them directly to the beach than coming to this place. Dash looked at Mr. Kim and said, well, that way, everyone could drink until they die, at least in this place, they could even eat good food without dying from stomach pain. Devon, who was in a swimsuit, thought about that incident where more than half of Sakura Bushido's students almost ended up in the hospital, after buying turkeys in bad condition, and cooking them as if they were good chefs. Those days were the only ones when Sakura Bushido was more desolate, it was truly a very tragic day. Is it a good idea to leave Mr. Chosen alone? Devon didn't trust what would happen if, for some reason, he met Daniel LaRusso. Dash paid no attention to this and said, let's go to the heights, we'll see all the fun better from above. Although he had wanted to present them in a better situation, it would be fun to see them meet in this place, after Daniel felt like he was in a war against the evil of Cobra Kai. Hey, this place isn't the beach on the second floor of the hostel near the beach, Aisha had appeared with her new friend Tori, who had invited her after becoming friends naturally. Tori looked at the place and said, where are the skater slackers of the guys who give you hip-hop demonstrations? Don't worry, they'll come when they distribute the appetizers. Aisha replied with a smile. But at that moment, she noticed a girl walking with two huge ice creams and murmured, I didn't expect to find her here Tori, who was looking at people in the pool, saw a guy with long hair waving at them with a smile and asked, who's that? His name is Dash, his girlfriend defeated me in the tournament final a few months ago. Aisha replied with a stiff smile and decided to approach out of courtesy. Devon was trying her strawberry ice cream by then, so when she saw Aisha approaching with another girl, she greeted them, you should try this ice cream, its flavor is amazing, and I heard it's homemade. I prefer not to get too cold, or I'll end up with the cold. Aisha walked to the table where Dash was and introduced, she's Tori, she recently joined Cobra Kai. Dash looked and extended his hand to greet. Although I'm not happy to see how Cobra Kai steals more and more students from us, I'm happy that every dojo is growing. That's very weird welcome from the competition Tori said, smiling at Dash's charisma, which was not common in a guy. Devon, on the side, was not indifferent either and said, I hope Cobra Kai has better students this year. The upcoming tournament should be the most important in a long time, so they must show good endurance. Dash, who was looking in the distance at two people, turned his head towards Devon, and became interested in this sudden competitive spirit that his girlfriend was showing. I haven't been trained for long, but I have experience. How long have you been in karate? Tori sat down after Dash vacated the seats. Five years, but we don't train in karate, but in kung fu. 
Dash ate his ice cream calmly, while watching this change of words with the Cobra Kai girls. It would be more interesting to see boys too, but it seems there was no one else besides Aisha and Tori. Aisha was surprised and asked, So how is it that you participate in karate tournaments? We are a mixed martial arts school, which means karate is also taught. Also, having a very good sensei from Japan now, the training will be more comprehensive. Dash boasted about the union with Mr. Chosen, who right now seemed to be enjoying the drinks. Tori was surprised, she has searched a lot for a good dojo, and in the end, she decided on Cobra Kai not only for its low prices in classes, but also because it was close to her work. She didn't have the best opportunities in life, but she thought it would be a good idea to know something more in self-defense. Dash, without raising his gaze, asked, So, I heard that your relationship with Miyagi-Do is not the best of all, how are you handling that? Our sensei has some issues, but I wouldn't say we're on bad terms with him. Aisha never thought of having bad terms with Miyagi-Do, she knew very little about it, so that was her importance in this matter. Tori smiled and said, I don't care about those things, I just joined Cobra Kai, so I don't know which dojos are rivals. However, now I know that we compete against you to be the best in the valley. Devon smiled slightly, then looked at Aisha and said, Then you'll have to work hard, last time, even though it was a good fight, no one in the women's division managed to land a hit on me. Cough. Cough. Dash forced a cough to divert the course of this conversation. Devon extended her hand and patted Dash's back, she scolded him for eating the ice cream he had neglected for a few minutes, and then sent him to buy another. This food is much better than that of other places, but the place is very quiet, said Devon as she approached the food table with Aisha. Aisha, who had become comfortable with Devon, smiled a bit and said, I must admit I was upset when you defeated me, but I'm working much harder to make the fight even more incredible this time. The defeat in the final in the women's division for Aisha was a devastating blow. She couldn't say that she hated Devon, but in a way, she felt frustrated by the way Devon treated her in the match. Only afterward did she realize that she wasn't facing just any girl, indeed, Devon was the strongest girl in her age group in karate. Devon, who didn't expect Aisha's confession, nodded. In fact, her attitude in the combat arena is very different outside, so she understood that many people might be confused by it. But if someone gets upset over such small things, it's not worth her attention. Feeling that even if they can't be best friends, Aisha can indeed go further, Devon said, it's just a matter of truly loving something, becoming strong is natural in the process. By the way, what is that tournament Dash mentioned about dojos from all over the country? Aisha couldn't get this out of her head after hearing Dash mention it recently. Devon thought about it, and after realizing what she was referring to, she murmured, oh, that looking closer at Aisha, she thought about how to say it and said, at the end of this year, there will be a national karate tournament. All dojos in the country are cordially invited, but only one was chosen locally. That means that probably between Sakura Bushido and the other dojos in the valley, only a few will be invited to that tournament. The reward is not that great, but the important thing is that this tournament would directly qualify us for the largest martial arts tournament in the world, the Senkai Tekai. When Devon said this, she served a plate full of food for herself and Dash, who had gone to the bathroom. She was saying these words since it was not an impossible secret to tell. In fact, there will be a meeting among senseis of all interested dojos at some point. That was one of the largest tournaments, even larger than the valley, which is only local. For this reason, Sakura Bushido has focused on improving more and more. Devon, who looked up, smiled and said, It seems like someone is looking for you Aisha, who turned her head, saw Samantha LaRusso, with whom she had recently had problems due to the differences between their dojos, so seeing her, she sighed internally. Hello. Samantha greeted, looking at Aisha, who was serving her food. Aisha replied curtly, Hello Devon stepped aside, wanting to see this scene more on the sidelines. After all, she didn't have a good relationship with Samantha due to various differences, and she deeply hated the behavior Samantha had in certain situations. And how are you? Samantha wanted to return to the previous relationship with Aisha. She knew she had made a mistake, so she wanted to take the first step, but it was difficult. Aisha, upon hearing the sweet words of whom she considered a great friend, sighed in frustration. She closed her eyes a bit and said, You know we're not okay, Sam. Why are you angry? Sam asked and said, You guys ruined our presentation. Aisha looked at Sam, who was becoming more odious to her eyes, and said directly, After your father attacked our dojo, what were we supposed to do? Come on, Aisha, he didn't attack you, Samantha said, wanting to take her father out of the conversation. No. Traitorous snake, it was very subtle. Aisha knew Samantha's character, it seemed she thought that only she was right, and when something didn't please her, she believed even more that she could solve everything with an innocent expression. Devon, on the side, remembered the video she discussed with Dash, where Miyagi Do Dojo was presented to the local kids. It was indeed a subtle attack on their eternal rival Johnny. He just tried to do the right thing, Samantha said, running out of arguments to get back on good terms with her friend. Aisha scoffed dryly and asked, Sure, are you saying that Cobra Kai is wrong? 
It's not wrong, it's just Samantha's side, what to buy shit, and asked, what are we doing? It's our vacation, we're at the beach and we're fighting over karate. Aisha didn't want to take this discussion further in Devon's presence, so she stated, we should fight for the kids, I thought I said the Cobra Kai and Miyagi do weren't on bad terms, I just heard something different. Devon said, approaching the friends who had just finished their discussion. Samantha looked at Devon and said, and I thought you wouldn't get along with Aisha. Are you alone here? I came with my boyfriend and all the members of my dojo Devon smiled a bit and said, I heard that your father officially opened his dojo, it has good karate, but I'm sure he doesn't fully know his master's technique. Samantha got angry, she couldn't imagine how Devon could know about Miyagi-Do's karate and said, What do you know about my father's karate? More than you can imagine, you'll find out sooner or later. Devon said with a smile, knowing the history that Mr. Chosen had with Samantha's father. Aisha, who knew the things could get out of control, said, Why don't you tell us about Mr. Sixpack? When Samantha heard this question about Robbie, she averted her gaze, smiled slightly, and began talking about her history with her father's disciple. Devon, on the side, knew from afar that Samantha would end up causing problems for both. She didn't know or care if Samantha's relationship with Miguel had ended or not, but when someone looks for a boyfriend to make the other party jealous, things don't end well. At that moment, Tori approached and said, Hi, girls, look what I got. Where did you get it? Aisha asked, a little scared. Tori looked at Devon and said, I took it from the bar, relax, the adults are celebrating, so they won't mind if we have a little fun. I like craziness, Devon murmured just to see the reactions of the others. Did you hear Devon? Shall we go? Samantha looked at her and said, return it, or you'll get into trouble. Haha, who are you? Aisha, who had remained silent, said, oh, Tori, she's Samantha. The famous Sam, come on, nobody will notice if we're missing a bottle of vodka. I could steal the silverware, and no one would notice. Tori said, inviting Sam to a girl's fun only. Sam frowned and said, you shouldn't steal anything, are you a nun? Come on, do you want to drink or not? Devon, on the side, smiled and said, I can get better bottles than that if there's really a problem. I think we could become good friends. Tori said while well, everyone except Samantha went to another table. They had a friendly yet not so friendly conversation. In the end, Dash noticed that Devon and the Cobra Kai girls enjoyed having a somewhat healthier rivalry with Sakura Bushido, which he personally, to maintain a healthier environment in this sport, it was necessary to compete fairly. Although he found the renewed rivalry between Cobra Kai and Miyagi do amusing, it wasn't the right time to be rivals in a harmful way. Hatred begets more hatred, inevitably leading to an inconvenient situation that would affect karate in the entire valley. While many might participate for fun, Dash, who now recognized this sport as a way of life, would intervene if things started spiraling out of control. As he returned from the bathroom, Dash noticed a guy whom he identified as one of the finalists in this year's karate tournament in the valley, so he decided to approach him. You must be Robbie. I watched your match in the karate tournament finals, and I must say, you're impressive. For a moment, I thought you'd win, but it's a shame it didn't end that way. Robbie, who was walking from the bar with a soda, was surprised that someone knew his name. He didn't have many acquaintances, so it was unexpected. He immediately turned around to see a guy extending his hand with a slight smile. Don't be shy. I'm Dashiell. I couldn't participate in the tournament because I traveled to Japan, and it happened to coincide with the valley tournament. Truly unfortunate. Dash was a bit more excited than usual to meet this guy in person. He couldn't stay still, meeting Daniel LaRusso's disciple, who was exactly like the Daniel from the old karate year. However, now it seemed the story had taken a different turn, and Miguel won the tournament as Johnny's disciple in Cobra Kai. Robbie smiled awkwardly and, after gathering his thoughts, asked, Are you the former tournament winner? That's right. Sam mentioned you, and so did Mr. LaRusso. He said that if I wanted to be the best fighter in the valley, I should first beat you, which is the biggest challenge, because no one has defeated you. Robbie, now much calmer, shared all this thanks to Dash's ease in communicating with him. You had some good fights, considering you didn't have a dojo under your guidance. In the end, you should have joined me Ijido, but as an important competitor, I'd love to have you in Sakura Bushido. Dash took the first step in this conversation, knowing he would refuse, but he still wanted things to be on good terms. Robbie was surprised, just as he was about to say something, Dash interrupted and pointed out, besides, you won't have to pay anything. And before you give an answer, I want you to know that I'm not inviting you with any ill intentions. At Sakura Bushido, we're preparing for national competitions, so we're not concerned about something local. I appreciate the offer, but I promised Mr. LaRusso that I'd be his student as long as he taught me again. Robbie subtly declined, observing if there was any change in Dash's expression, but he found none. Dash smiled indifferently and said, it's a shame. I would have liked to have you in Sakura Bushido, but I guess it's too late. Would you have accepted if the invitation was at the tournament? Maybe Robbie didn't have a concrete answer. He wasn't particularly interested in karate at first, he only did it to annoy his father, and continues to do so to this day. 
Unlike Dash and many others, Robbie didn't feel a deep love for martial arts. Therefore, he didn't have a definite response, and didn't want to be ungrateful for Dash's kindness. After running out of much else to say, Dash looked Robbie in the eyes and told him, so that's it. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I hope to see you in the upcoming tournaments. But I'd like to give you some advice. Hatred brings consequences. You're a good kid, we could have been friends. Remember that you'll always have my help if you ever need it. That's a bit weird, Robbie muttered as he slowly walked away in search of Samantha. Was it worth it? Devin asked Dash from a distance, knowing that Dash should fail to invite Robbie to Sakura Bushido. Dash smiled and said, I already knew the answer looking again at Robbie, he suddenly noticed a commotion in the distance. After seeing Robbie running out of the pool, he frowned. What could be happening? I'll be right back, I think something very interesting is about to happen. Dash grabbed a chicken mask from Devon's bag, and headed towards where Robbie had run, sensing that something might unfold. Devon looked at Dash, who had returned from the bathroom, and asked, Are you going to make headlines again? I hope not Dash said as he bid farewell to Devon for a moment, and to his new friends who seemed to be enjoying their drinks. Tori watched Dash walk away and said to Devon, who had returned to the table, You have a very handsome boyfriend. How did you manage to get him in your arms? By hitting him hard, you have to beat him with fists for them to pay attention, Devon said with a smile as other women admired her boyfriend, who only had eyes for her. Aisha smiled and said, that is some good advice, no wonder you two have been the championship couple for three consecutive years. At that moment, Samantha, who had approached from behind, said, listen, my mom's wallet is missing. That's too bad, Tori said, slightly intoxicated from the alcoholic drinks. Devon, who was more sober, asked, what are you insinuating, Mrs. LaRusso? You should watch your tone, or we might have problems. Tori, who had caught on to what Samantha was insinuating, stopped laughing and looked at her more seriously. It's not about you, Devon, but I wonder if you know anything about it, Samantha said, looking directly at Tori, who had recently stolen a bottle of vodka. Samantha looked at Tori and said, give me the wallet, and I won't call the authorities. Devon was surprised by Samantha's absolute confidence. Because of this, she didn't say anything and stepped back a few steps. Is this a joke? Tori asked, seriously enraged. Aisha, who was also offended, said, Sam, she didn't steal your mother's wallet. Of course, and she didn't steal a bottle of vodka either, Samantha clarified her point, looking and pointing, and she wouldn't steal half the cutlery either. Devon, on the side, smiled sarcastically and said, I'm not aware of the cutlery, but we didn't steal anything. We paid for every penny that bottle cost. Should I show you the charge on my credit card? I'll handle this. Tori didn't want someone else fighting her battles and stepped forward. Listen very well, I didn't steal from your mother, bitch. Samantha stayed silent, staring at her. But after realizing that this would cause trouble for Tori, she sighed and said, You know what, let's just leave. Where do you think you're going? Tori, who had resigned from fighting, became even more upset because Samantha wanted to grab her bag, shouting as she turned around to push her, Let me go. Although the push wasn't much, Devin could see that Samantha stumbled over a ball on the ground and fell backward onto the food table. Crack. The entire food table collapsed, and Samantha, who had fallen onto it, was covered in food. Devon, on the side, weighed in her eyes and muttered, Damn, that was extreme Tori didn't say anything and turned around, staying to apologize for something that clearly wasn't her fault made no sense. Are you okay? Aisha asked as she approached Samantha, who was surprised to have been thrown to the ground. Samantha, who felt angry, said, You got yourself a charming friend. You shouldn't have accused her of something like that, Aisha said, looking for Tori, who had left the place. Devon, who managed to save her and Dash's food, nodded at those words and said, She's partly right. I guess you're happy about something like this. Me? It seems you have a bad idea about my behavior toward you. But I don't want to clarify all the problems you've created just by judging a situation and not knowing the context. But I'm not surprised, you're already that way, Devon said as she left the place. Despite having no issues with Samantha, she knew they couldn't be on good terms at least now. It wasn't the first time, from her experience, that Samantha judged another person. She had done the same thing back when Dash was about to fight Samantha's ex, without knowing the context of the situation. It was truly frustrating, but since they weren't friends and didn't coincide in classes, she didn't give it much importance. That's why she wouldn't start now, it wasn't worth it after all. Why are we the ones walking away if we didn't do anything wrong? Aisha asked as she caught up to Tori, who was about to leave. Tori, who understood the situation and what could happen, said, if she cries and calls mom, I'll get in trouble. My life is already a mess, there's no point in getting involved in external problems that I can avoid. Devon, who had approached from behind, said, I don't want to make fun of misfortunes, but Samantha partly deserved that, did you bring the bottles? Tori asked, seeing the bottles in Devon's hands. Devon smiled and said, well, even though I don't drink, I can be your companion and take you home. That would be great, Tori said as she hugged Devon, who hadn't drunk. Aisha also smiled and walked with her new friends toward the beach. 
On the pier, Dash followed Robbie, who had descended to the beach, and decided to stay back to see what would happen. Apparently, there had been a massive wall of theft, so for some reason, he believed this was related. Did you see that girl in the green swimsuit? Man, don't be thinking about that now. Haha, <laughs> alright, let's grab the stuff and get out of here, said a dark-skinned man wearing a cap. Robbie, who was below the pier, positioned his cell phone to record what was about to happen, and when his former friends came down, he confronted them. For God's sake, this guy again said the dark-skinned man with disgust. Robbie, who wasn't afraid, raised his hands and said, same situation, just a different summer now. What are you doing here Robbie? Robbie pointed to the corner under the pier and said, I found your hideout, you're going to return everything. Haha, <laughs> better get lost, buddy, said the other long-haired man, mocking Robbie's attitude. Haven't you learned your lesson from last time? Asked the dark-skinned man as he cracked his knuckles and pointed, we'll remind you. Robbie clenched his fists and said, bring it on. Boom. Just as Robbie was about to prepare to fight his two former friends, a red-haired man from behind hit him with a wooden stick. The blow was so strong that Robbie ended up on the ground, leaving him out of commission for a few minutes. Darn it, did you forget it was a job for three? Asked the dark-skinned man, mocking. Yeah, you're a darn idiot. Dash, who had witnessed everything, put on the chicken mask, descended the pier stairs to where Robbie was knocked down, and said in a cold tone, you also forgot the possibility that Robbie isn't alone. Shall we start dancing? Damn, am I hallucinating? That's a freaking guy with a chicken mask. Robbie looked up and saw Dash slowly descending while taking off his hoodie, revealing his muscles across his entire body. The long-haired man pulled out a knife and said, you better step back or you'll get a little gift. Stop being a darn wimp and fight like a man. There's a reason why genetics gave us two darn fists, said Dash, standing in front of the trio of men holding Robbie down. The dark-skinned man advanced toward Dash and said, I'll take care of this clown. Now. As the figure approached, Dash moved forward like a tiger with his fists clenched and his guard raised. In an instant, his two arms moved like snake attacks, and his knuckles soon struck the dark-skinned man's body. Ouch. The dark-skinned man felt intense pain in several areas of his body in just a few seconds. Dash was too fast, his fist struck a few times before his opponent even attacked. A powerful and direct force shook his enemy. When he attacked ruthlessly and with all his might, it was sure to leave bruises for every punch landed on his opponent. Boom. 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 Taking a step forward, Dash showed no mercy and attacked, completely ignoring the defense. His speed was superior, there was no need to worry about a punch landing on his body, because he moved faster than those simple blows. Dash, who delivered a final blow, saw how the dark-skinned man fell to the ground. He had to admit that the chicken mask was uncomfortable when fighting, but for obvious reasons, he didn't want to reveal his identity. Damn lunatic. The man with the knife let go of Robbie, who was looking at his unconscious friend. Dash stepped back, raised his hands, opening his palms, and asked, Do you know how many years in prison you'll get for brandishing a weapon, and attempting to stab someone? Screw you. At this moment, it was better to run, Dash knew it perfectly well, but he didn't have a chance to do it with Robbie still on the ground. So, taking advantage of the terrain, he forcefully kicked sand onto the face of his attacker. Ah. Dash moved in as soon as the knife-wielding man covered his eyes. At this moment, nothing mattered more than taking this guy out of the fight because he was the most dangerous. Crack. As soon as Dash was at a distance, he didn't want to get too close, due to any reaction from that man, so he attacked with a kick to his ribs. Dash, in this attack, assumed he had broken something inside that man, because as soon as he attacked, he fell to the ground while writhing in pain. Ah. Stop crying, darn idiot. Dash kicked the hand of the man holding his stomach, and after removing the knife, the rest was more straightforward. Now. But the moment Dash gave himself the strength, Daniel jumped from the pier and landed on the back of the only remaining red-haired man. Watching this scene, Dash, who knew everything was over, looked at Robbie and said, Hey buddy, make sure they get arrested, or we'll have problems. Robbie stared at Dash for a moment, so he said, Sure, thanks, I have to go to my girlfriend, I'll call security, and make sure they return the stolen wallets. Dash, after making sure everything was okay, raised his thumb and ran away. Bam. Boom. Boom. Daniel, who had finished taking down the huge red-haired man, looked at the other men on the ground and asked, Who was the guy with the chicken mask? A friend replied to Robbie as he got up from the ground and looked at all the subdued men. Who oh god, my back. These are not good times, murmured Daniel as he rubbed his back due to the pain. Is this my house? Tori staggered in Devon's arms as he helped her reach home. Dash woke closely, ready to react if she needed assistance on the way, fortunately, she didn't. While taking her home, Dash realized that not everyone has the best living conditions, and became aware of the luck he had. Not everyone had the money to focus solely on training, some kids his age worked during vacations. It made him more conscious of the fortune of being born into a family with good resources. Will you take her inside? Dash asked, observing Devon advancing with Tori, who seemed more asleep than awake. 
Devin looked at Dash and asked with some confusion, what do you mean? I have to take her, in the end, she got drunk because of me. Well. Dash followed Devin until a man appeared on the second floor of the apartment building. Do you know if she lives there? The man looked at Tori, smiled faintly, and said, yes, she lives there by the way, when are you going to pay the rent? You've missed the payment date, so I'm forced to ask. Dash took a step forward and said, she's a bit intoxicated, the party was crazy. Can't you ask her at a more convenient time? Who the hell are you, you damn brat? Ah, the girl's boyfriend. The man pointed at Tori, who was being carried by Devin, and grinned perversely. Dash looked at Devin, and she nodded when their eyes met. He continued walking without looking back, and by the time they disappeared from view, Dash looked at the man who seemed to be the epitome of a misogynist and asked, Do you have a problem you'd like to share? The man mocked and approached Dash threateningly. Will you do something about it if I have a problem? Does she have anything to do with you? Since you've partaken of my cake, you should try something new. The man's gaze shifted to Devin, and at that moment, Dash's blood boiled like hot water. Looking at the man in front of him, Dash slightly leaned his body and hit the man's ribs. As soon as he bent, Dash smashed his nose with his forehead. Crack. Ah. The man's scream echoed, and when he tried to lift his gaze to hit Dash, he was met with a series of quick punches that soon left him on the ground. Thud. 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 Enough, wait, don't hit me anymore. Just when Dash thought it wasn't enough, Devin appeared by his side and said, It's enough, don't cause us more problems than we already have here. Dash looked at Devin for a few brief seconds, then sighed and looked at the man on the ground. Hey, idiot, when is this girl's rent due? Go to hell. Devin frowned and walked over the man's hand, squeezing it tightly, and asked, You're being asked a damn question, answer it if you want us to keep being polite. Just $1,600 the man said, trying to check if his nose wasn't broken. Dash looked at this pitiful guy and reached into his bag to pull out his wallet. Despite not having much cash, he took out all he had, roughly where of the money he had on him, and put it in the man's hand, still checking his nose. Here's $9,000, consider it 6 months rent for the family of that girl. Remember to forget this little incident we had. Dash leaned toward the man and warned, if I find out you're collecting rent for the next 6 months, we'll come, and we'll break your bones. The man on the ground really didn't want trouble, so he said, everything will be fine, there won't be a problem without hesitation, Dash shoot the man, although it was wrong, he couldn't help it because he was an idiot. Come on, let's get out of here. Devin said, taking Dash's hand as if there was more control on her part by doing so. Devin remembered how Dash was, and she knew there was only one reason for him to fight someone else. So she said nothing. He was a good boyfriend, but these fights were the ones that should be avoided. Dash, who walked to the car, returned to normal, but he still complained, the world is full of idiots. Devin raised her eyebrows, then got into the car while her mind was in turmoil. Every detail of Dash's behavior went through her mind, and she said, but that doesn't give you the right to hit every idiot who gets into your life. Unwilling to stay in this place any longer, Dash started the car, stepped on the accelerator, and said, but that's something that can be avoided at times. Let's avoid this more Devin muttered, worried because, as Dash always says, weapons exist, so they must approach life more calmly. After intervening in that fight, Mr. LaRusso returned to his dojo, which was the house of Mr. Miyagi, who had trained him in his youth. He began to meditate in a ceremonial room. It had been a long time since he was involved in a fight, and that entirely foreign sensation to his body had disturbed his mind. It's not that Daniel was a person of peace, but since the resurgence of Cobra Kai, his life had accelerated much faster than he could control. Huff. Meditating in the middle of the ceremonial room with soft and deep steps, Daniel seemed to regain the tranquility that weighed on him, quickly controlling his emotional state. At that moment, Robbie entered silently, something that Daniel noticed. So, after opening his eyes, he asked, How's your head? It still hurts a bit. Robbie smiled at how foolish she had been and said, I was stupid to put myself in that situation. Daniel looked at his young student and said, You did what you thought was right, but something good came out of all this saying this. Robbie took out his cell phone, and the recorded video began to play. A karateka with a chicken mask and a former All-Valley champion defeating three criminals using Miyagi do karate. This could go viral, and by then, we could have the dojo filled at noon. Daniel looked at the phone for a few seconds, and after hesitating a bit, he shook his head. It's not necessary. Miyagi do is to protect others and learn to defend yourself. I'm not seeking fame. Mr. Miyagi didn't recruit me, he wasn't looking for students. He took me in because I needed it. I approached him, not him to me. We must be patient, whoever needs us will find us sooner or later. Daniel didn't seek to have more students than Johnny, he wanted his students to be better and truly understand the true karate his sensei had taught him. It would be of no use if he did this out of ambition, he didn't really seek that. But at that moment, a strange voice was heard at the entrance. Excuse me Dimitri, it had finally found the dojo, pointed back and said, It wasn't clear if the entrance was at the front, or if I should ring the bell oh god, you also have a corpond, but yours looks more traditional. 
How much does it cost you to maintain it? Can I help you? Daniel looked at Dimitri with confusion as he entered as if it were his own home, leaving him very stunned. Dimitri, realizing his lack of respect, became serious, looked at Daniel, and said, Yes, I want to learn the karate of this place. You've come to the right place. Daniel said, smiling a bit, knowing that he could finally have a new disciple in addition to his daughter and Robbie, who had been following him for some time. Dimitri smiled faintly and said, Although I heard that they teach the same karate as Sakura Bushido, the classes, because they're free, are better you know. Classes at Sakura Bushido are extremely expensive, although the first class facilities are worth it. While saying this, Dimitri looked around and pointed, By the way, Sakura Bushido has top-notch training machines, private showers, rest areas, and a large perfect yard. Wait, 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 did you say that Sakura Bushido teaches the same karate as Miyagi do? That must be a confusion, no one else but me knows the karate taught here. Daniel said with a nervous smile, understanding that there might be confusion in Dimitri about karate, but that would be resolved after a brief explanation. Dimitri, who had been in Sakura Bushido's free class, shook his head and said, I'm not lying. The sensei who spoke about Mr. Miyagi's karate. Samantha then remembered the words Devin had told her and murmured, so that's what he meant, am I the only one not understanding anything? Robbie asked as confused as Daniel. Daniel, who began to think if Mr. Miyagi would have another student, shook his head and asked, do you remember the name of the sensei who teaches at Sakura Bushido? Oh, I didn't think it mattered. He just arrived from Japan, and his name is Chosen Taguchi. He's an even fiercer master than those in Cobra Kai his training is brutal, he adapted them with top-notch equipment, and I ended up in bed for a few days unable to move. Upon hearing that name, a flood of memories from the past overwhelmed Daniel. He remembered the death match with Chosen and murmured, that's impossible. Oh, I'm not lying. I even recorded a video teaching Devin the correct use of the katana Dimitri, took out his cell phone, and showed them a video. Daniel, who saw Chosen's face, trembled a bit, opened his eyes wide and said, what is he doing here? Do you know him, dad? Samantha saw her father's expression and understood that things couldn't be simple. More than that. Early in the morning, a dense fog covered a forest near Dash's residence. Inside the thick forest, a series of striking sounds echoed repeatedly. In an open space within the same forest, three wooden figures shaped like humans were arranged in a triangular pattern on the ground. In the center of the triangle stood a skull figure swiftly evading, retreating, and simulating defense, managing to shadow the extended wooden arms reaching forward. Pump. 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 The sounds of the strikes occurred as Dash's hands collided with the wooden dummies while he moved his feet. From each sound, one could feel the deep and powerful force behind each punch. Naturally, Dash, moving between the wooden figures, was intensely trained after being absent from rigorous training for some time. Right now, he was entirely focused on the wooden figures, imagining a fight in his mind. He raised his guard and responded with punches from time to time. Moments later, his expression turned serious as two of his fingers curled and fiercely attacked specific points on the wooden dummies. Pump. Just as Dash's calloused fingers struck those wooden areas, an explosive sound was heard. Immediately after, the sturdy wooden dummy wobbled, showing even marks of being broken. Pump. Pump. At that moment, Dash extended his left hand and quickly attacked twice in the same manner. Immediately after, both wooden dummies moved back and forth. Dash's strength is truly formidable. Witnessing the destructive potential of Dash's attacks, Mr. Kim, who was giving him special attention in the mornings, couldn't help but feel satisfied. Since childhood, his first student had shown a willingness to go to any length for training, even going so far as to harden his bones through a painful procedure. Dash's Kung Fu had evolved in an enviable way, even rivaling Mr. Kim himself, a veteran in martial arts, who had never been defeated before. Having trained Dash brutally for the past five years, Mr. Kim discovered that his potential had reached the maximum a human could aspire to achieve, and from this point on, he would only get stronger. Of course, Dash was 17 years old, and the estimated maximum strength in a human usually reaches its peak potential around the age of 19 if trained correctly. Therefore, after months of training, this fact was happening to Dash, who was showing visible changes in his body. While going through part of his rigorous training, Dash wiped the sweat from his forehead as he sat under a huge tree. With a serious expression on his face, he proceeded to watch a video where a guy named Jack Brewer from Wasabi Warriors won a championship against one of the strongest dojos in Japan. The video showed Jack dominating in all fights, excelling not only in strength, but also in speed. He was, after all, an incredible rival, so strong that Dash wasn't sure if he could win a match against him. For a while, Devon had been investigating those who had chosen her and Dash's opponents. She then met Kim, the girl she would face, and found out that both of them followed each other on social media. Jack and Kim were incredible dual fighters, matching Devon and Dash in skills, but not in matches one. This made Dash take these rivals seriously, and he began rigorous training again. Um, on a scale of skills, who the two is faster? 
While Dash watched the fight, this question came to his mind as he compared himself to Jack. As he thought about it, Dash turned off his phone and walked towards Mr. Kim, who was checking the training equipment. That guy is very strong. When you face him, you must be prepared for his strength and speed, Mr. Kim said, assuming that Jack was as good as Cheng, if not better. Dash smiled upon hearing this and said, Dri and Cheng will come from China to participate in the tournament, so Sakura Bushido will have its best fighters in the competition. Mr. Kim said nothing to Dash's words. He had realized that his young student wanted to experience a desperate battle in which he would be eliminated. Perhaps always being among the top fighters of his age had taken away his desire to keep fighting and winning. Let's go back, classes will start in a few days, so it's good that we stopped training so much for now, Mr. Kim said, dragging Dash back home. Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School. Here. 100 students aligned perfectly, following the training of a straight punch. Their bodies moved in sync with their sensei, chosen, and each maintained a serious expression on their faces. Here. Hum. The punches thrown into the air resonated in the vast space they shared, and each student felt in tune with the training. Double front punch. Here. Hum. Hum. Lower position, elimination strike. Hum. Mr. Chosen struck towards the air, but directed it towards the ground, and all his students subsequently did the same. Throughout this time, he had prided himself on his students strictly adhering to his training. Each of them had shown incredible potential, and among all the classes, his was the most disciplined. As a karate sensei, Chosen simulated fights, warmed up, and taught students new movements. Mr. Kim handled deeper combats, teaching students a different aspect of fights. As for the rest of the teachers, they were responsible for teaching other disciplines. Front kick. Here. Pum. Daniel, who had arrived at Sakura Bushido Dojo, was surprised by its beauty from the outside. It was evident that this place was top-notch just by looking at the exterior, which harmonized well with nature. Upon entering the building, he saw students talking about various things, all of them wearing karate, kung fu uniforms, or simply dressed in regular clothes. Can I help you sir? An attendant at the entrance approached Daniel and asked with a respectful voice. Daniel was surprised, thinking he was talking to a master of this place, but upon closer inspection, he realized that wasn't the case. I'm just checking out the place, are you planning to enroll any of your children in this martial arts school? If so, you're in the best place in the whole valley. Would you like to see the results of our students upon entering this school? In front of Daniel, the attendant, responsible for many parents visiting the facilities, took out a smart tablet with all the necessary information. Daniel, aware of the confusion, shook his head and said with a smile, I'm actually looking for Sensei Chosen. Mr. Chosen. Oh, now that I see it, you Mr. LaRusso I see. Please, follow me, said the attendant, showing the way to where Mr. Chosen was at that moment. On the way, Daniel saw more students and asked, haven't the classes started yet? Oh, no. Usually, the more experienced ones train on their own or help newcomers with their training. Classes for those who are more advanced are only on weekends, so they are not strictly required to attend. They prefer to train on the new machines that have recently arrived from China. The veterans of Sakura Bushido had 3-5 to five years of training, and they had classes at such a low price due to their value that usually, $100 covered the membership for the whole year, and they could even earn money. Although Dash didn't make much money with the dojo, the brand had a very high value, especially in official competitions. That's why he valued his more experienced students, they were, after all, the sharpest sword in this branch, and they would be winning important competitions. Many dojos worldwide hoped to face competitors from Sakura Bushido, they were the rivals to beat in major tournaments. Sometimes, the branch in China competed against this one in official competitions. In more important tournaments, all of Sakura Bushido joined forces and created a strong team that had not lost in recent years, at least in tournaments where the entire roster was included. It's here. The attendant pointed to the door, and Daniel nodded upon entering, took off his shoes, and began to walk on the mat covering the entire floor inside. Double front punch. Chosen shouted while looking at his students sternly. Here. Pump. Pump. Daniel could see firsthand the absolute coordination of the students in this dojo. From what he could see at first glance, there were more than a hundred, which was absolutely impressive. At that moment, Devin, who was among the students, saw Daniel LaRusso, took a step forward, and shouted, Break. Here. Having the authority of the whole class along with Dash and a few more students, all the young ones shouted and assumed a rest position without hesitation. Chosen, who knew someone had entered, sighed and said, You took a long time to come and visit me. I was about to come see you this afternoon Daniel, who knew he was in the presence of Chosen, nervously walked towards him and said, It would have been even more surprising the way I found out that you were teaching at this dojo. What are you doing here? Should I answer you? Chosen asked in a cold voice. No, it's not necessary I'm not here to cause trouble. When I heard that someone was teaching Miyagi-Do techniques in this dojo, I wanted to know who it was, and it turns out it's you. 
Daniel smiled nervously, trying not to gain a new enemy amid all the issues he had with Cobra Kai and their ruthless tactics. Josen nodded slightly, looked at Daniel's attire, and said, You're in a martial arts school, change into the uniform and join the class. There's still much to teach. I'm not here to teach or train, I just wanted to find out or address a question I had. Daniel didn't expect to get involved with Chosen, fearing that past problems might resurface. However, Chosen had a different response in mind. He said, Mr. Victor, accompany Sensei LaRusso to the changing rooms, and lend him a uniform to join our combat class. Yes Sensei. Victor felt excited to witness the subtle electric field between these two warriors, so he stood up and said, This way, Mr. LaRusso. Daniel smiled helplessly, regretting coming during class time, but now that he was here, there was no turning back without learning more about Chosen, who seemed to have changed little. As he was guided to the changing rooms, he saw numerous paintings, and one, in particular, caught his attention because he recognized the location where the painting had been done. That's a tournament in China. Dash, our number one warrior, won that tournament after breaking the pinky finger on his left hand, Victor said, very excited about those memories. Daniel nodded without saying anything and entered the changing rooms, where he quickly changed into a white uniform. After looking at himself in the mirror, he stepped out. Victor, waiting outside, smiled and walked towards the training room where the entire class was waiting for them. When Daniel entered again, all the students were sitting around in silence. The atmosphere seemed very deliberate, which made Daniel uneasy, but he still walked towards Chosen, who was at his side. Now what do we do? Daniel hesitated a bit before asking. Chosen looked at him briefly and said, a simulation combat. Looking at all the students, Chosen took a step forward and said, Many years ago, I had the opportunity to face Daniel LaRusso, not in the terms I would have wanted and in a dishonorable way. Still, following Mr. Miyagi's example, I've managed to improve by trying to follow his silhouette marked with the true principles of a man. When everyone heard this, they admired Mr. Chosen for his changes. Everyone makes mistakes, and knowing that their great sensei was no different, they respected him for exposing that part of his life that many others wished to forget. Daniel LaRusso, who originally believed that Mr. Chosen hadn't changed at all, had some doubts. He didn't exactly know what had happened to him during all the years after their life and death duel, but it seemed that things weren't so simple. Now, as a celebration, Mr. LaRusso and I will face each other to give you a demonstration of the karate we are teaching, Mr. Chosen said, walking towards the mat. Daniel smiled at all those enthusiastic looks from the students eager to see two adults fight. He broke into a cold sweat when he saw Chosen's intense gaze and said, Haha, I don't think it's a good idea to face each other in front of the students. You've defeated me once. What does it matter if we face each other in front of my students, but could even become your disciples? Chosen asked as he positioned himself on the mat. Daniel, who didn't want to fight Mr. Chosen again, finally accepted just for a mere practical demonstration. Walking towards the mat, he raised his guard and said, I really don't know why you want to do this, but there's no turning back now. It doesn't matter. Faced with Chosen's fierce attack, Daniel's expression suddenly turned serious. He immediately began to deflect the attacks, but after a few seconds of retreating, he received a strong blow that, although he covered it, was too painful. After dodging a few more blows, Daniel took the lead and hit Chosen's shoulder, making him step back. You still have that strength from years ago. Just a bit, let's continue. Chosen said, instinctively smiling. Watching the attacks again, Daniel stepped back and began to dodge the attacks while looking for a way to counter. Who? All the students were dazzled by Mr. Daniel's attacks, who demonstrated superiority in combat. But no one underestimated Chosen, because everyone knew he was playing during the fights, as he hadn't shown his true karate skills during training. Pump, pump. Losing the match again, Mr. Chosen adjusted his robe and said, one last demonstration. It will be the last Daniel, who had lost his breath, sweated, and nodded, looked seriously at Chosen and attacked with straight punches. This time, stepping back, Chosen raised his gaze again and smiled slightly. Daniel, in response to this provocation, advanced with a direct kick. But surprisingly, Chosen neither dodged nor retreated. Instead, he faced Daniel's attack head-on with a counter that left his opponent's muscles numb. Pump. The strong blow, which wasn't actually that strong, left Daniel helpless. In an instant, he felt how he completely lost the strength in his leg, and before he could recover, several blows landed on his arms and muscles. Pump. 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 In an instant, all his muscles went numb, and Daniel, who hadn't even warmed up before the fight, fell to his knees in pain. Chosen, who remained standing, looked at Daniel with a serious expression and grabbed his uniform. There's something I didn't tell you, this is a fight to the death, a duel to what? Daniel looked at all his students, and seeing that they didn't react, he was left stunned. Chosen raised his hand, and Devin, who had walked to his side, handed him the hilt of a sword. Looking at Daniel with a cold gaze, he said, live or die, man. Staring at the sharp edge of the sword, Daniel paled and said, Wait, what are you doing? I've waited a long time for this, Chosen said with an expression full of hatred, looking at Daniel intensely. 
Daniel, unable to move, lifted the sword in terror. Chosen, no ya. Chosen shouted as he brought the sword down towards Daniel's neck, who was as pale as paper. But just as the blade was about to touch Daniel's body, the sword stopped, and Chosen, who returned the sword to Devon, touched Daniel's nose with two fingers. Unk. Everyone who witnessed this planned prank, from the moment Daniel was taken to the changing rooms, looked at their sensei, Mr. Chosen, and chuckled. Ha ha ha. Chosen couldn't stop laughing at Daniel's terrified expression a moment ago. Daniel, who stood up, didn't seem amused and said, I'm glad, really glad that you're having fun at my expense. Oh, you should have seen your face. Mr. Chosen said, still smiling. Daniel, who knew everyone was in on this prank, waved his hands and asked, What technique was that? My limbs were completely numb. Seek a pressure points of Miyagi, Chosen said with a calmer expression. All seriousness had disappeared from his gaze, replaced by absolute tranquility. Chosen, who saw Daniel's confusion, explained calmly, If an enemy insists on war, then you take away their ability to wage it. Daniel was surprised, he didn't expect this kind of karate technique. Chosen, knowing they would have a long conversation, looked at his students and said, Miss Devon, take charge of the class. Yes sensei. Devon said as she walked to the front. Showdown, Derek against Elias. Here. Devon stood in front of the class and said, you know the drill, three points to win. While Daniel watched Mr. Chosen's class continue without his presence, he looked at him and asked, can you teach me this? The pressure points. Of course, let's go to a quieter place. Chosen nodded and led Daniel to the back of the building where there was a large courtyard. Normally, students train meditation techniques here, and others came to do their schoolwork. Daniel, surprised by the place, saw the koi fish pond and those massive sakura trees. Then they walked to a double wooden seat, and both sat down. This place is amazing, I was also very surprised. This place is incredibly pleasant to spend the rest of the day just admiring. For a long time, I hadn't felt this way, but now I believe my destiny is to be a part of this place, Mr. Chosen said with a nostalgic look. Listening to Chosen speak in this tone, Daniel's gaze focused on a koi fish, and he asked, Where do you live? I have a house nearby, granted to me by young Dash, whom I am teaching temperament and inner control. I could see in his eyes that he was similar to me in a certain way, so I accepted to teach at this dojo just to guide him in those matters, Chosen said with a faint smile. Daniel nodded, it seemed that there were many more things involved in Chosen's visit, and asking too much might bother him. As time goes by. After our fight many years ago, I felt so ashamed of my actions towards you, that I tried to take my own life, but my uncle Sato was the one who saved me. Chosen showed a calm look, as if those bitter memories were now a much more bitter but fleeting taste. He said, over time, I became a better person and started running Miyagi Do in Okinawa, teaching all of Mr. Miyagi's lessons, who is a man of great honor. I didn't know that fight it affected you so much, Daniel's eyes recognized Chosen's change, and he said, if it helps, I forgave you for everything from a long time ago. Thank you, Chosen nodded, inexplicably feeling a weight lifted off him, and he looked at Daniel gratefully. This means a lot to me, really. By the way, I heard from the students that you have some kind of war with one of your former rivals. Daniel smiled embarrassedly, explained his entire story with Cobra Kai, and said, but what I avoid is confrontation. I need to teach true karate without violence. That's very honorable. Remember, if you need help, you can call me anytime. Once I teach you the techniques you haven't learned from Mr. Miyagi, then you'll know where to find me. Daniel nodded with a smile, knowing that Mr. Chosen had changed for the better, which actually lifted a burden off him. Cobra Kai Dojo. Dash parked his car near the supermarket and walked slowly towards the doors of this dojo, that brings back so many memories every time he visits. When he got out of the car, his gaze turned to an old man who was staring at him, and he soon remembered who he was. Chris inevitably recognized Dash, the five-time champion of the All-Valley Tournament, and one of the strongest young fighters he had the opportunity to acknowledge. Are you lost, or have you decided to switch dojos? Chris asked directly with a somewhat profound expression. Dash smiled a bit and asked, it seems the Cobra Kai now has two senseis. Is Mr. Lawrence inside? He's inside, but the question I'm asking myself is what is a student from Sakura Bushido doing here? Chris thought of some convenient way to have this kid in Cobra Kai, but none of his options were optimal for having him on their side for now. Dash smiled and said, I want to make a proposal to Sensei Lawrence, a dojo to dojo competition. He should know better than anyone that competitive spirit is the best for the student's growth. For that precise reason, I want to hold 10 matches, the first day at the Cobra Kai Dojo, and the second at Sakura Bushido. Chris was very surprised by this innovative proposal, that was exactly what the kids needed to feel the true passion of karate, and he thought it was a good idea. Come with me, classes are about to start, but you still have time to propose that to Lawrence. Chris walked into the dojo while whistling. Dash took off his shoes on the mat, respecting the dojo, and after seeing the changes they had made in this place, he was a bit surprised. 
After walking through the place, although he knew the facilities were old and there were still many things to improve, he thought about the rough style of this place, believing that this style was Lawrence's, and it amused him a bit. Dash, I heard you were looking for me, do you need something? Lawrence looked at Dash, who was looking around, so he asked. Dash couldn't hide his smile and bowed respectfully to both karate masters. He didn't know if things between them had been resolved, but for them to be together, it meant they had. I hope you forgive me for coming unannounced. For some time, I've been thinking with the senseis of Sakura Bushido, about creating a competition between our students and some other dojos nearby. As I personally met many of your students, I would like 10 of yours to face 10 of ours, one day in your dojo and the other in ours. Dash proposed his thoughts. When would that be? Dash was surprised and said, of course, when your dojo is ready to accept us for a day. I don't know how you wanted to do it, whether to choose among the new students or the strongest we have. Instead of fighting the strongest, it could also be interesting for the new students to have some fun, so it was a good proposal. Johnny Lawrence, who knew perfectly well that Sakura Bushido had better students, said, why not do it half and half? Dash understood what he meant. Of course, we can do it that way. As I know your dojo is not very new in terms of reopening time, I will consider bringing students with less than 3 years of training, to make things much more balanced. Bring your top 10 students, of course, you would be on the list too, Chris said, interrupting the conversation. He considered being underestimated in this way a great insult to Cobra Kai. Johnny turned around to look at Lawrence and said, You can do that, bring girls too since it would be interesting. Since Chris mentioned it, he wasn't a coward, and knew perfectly well how bad they wouldn't be in terms of level. That's amazing, I'd like to fight with your champion if I have the chance under tournament rules, Dash said very excited to be more related to these people. He hadn't had the opportunity to be very related to Cobra Kai, because he was very focused on Sakura Bushido, and was not willing to abandon it. He would prefer a thousand times to compete with those he admires in a certain way and win, than to abandon his dojo that has improved so much with so much effort. So, when would you like to make this skill exchange? Dash asked, looking at Johnny, who seemed very excited. Chris on the side said, tomorrow, we can do it tomorrow at the opening time, which would be in a few minutes. I'll call you, do you have a number? Lawrence wanted to have his best students, so it was a good idea to do it when they were all here. Dash nodded and took out his cell phone. Well, once it's confirmed that tomorrow we'll come with our students to your dojo, Sensei Lawrence, and you must be Sensei Chris. Chris looked at Dash and said, I never told you my name. I'm friends with Miguel, Eli, and the others. Of course, they've talked about the new Sensei teaching at Cobra Kai. Dash said with a subtle smile. At the moment he was about to leave, Chris said while holding his uniform with both hands, why don't you stay to watch the class? The kids would feel better knowing that this skill exchange is serious. Shouldn't you use makeup? Miguel entered the dojo with Eli, who had a black eye. That's for wimps. How can you use makeup to cover an injury from a punch? Hawk shook his head at Miguel's surreal suggestion. By the time they entered, they saw Dash wearing a karateki from Sakura Bushido. Hawk, who was the most surprised, asked, what are you doing here? Now, can't I visit my friends? Dash asked, looking seriously at Hawk, who immediately felt a bit awkward. Miguel looked at his friend and smiled. Are you planning to switch dojos? Of course not. There's a surprise for that, so go change Hawk, for God's sake, who was the woman who hit you? Dash, who made this question jokingly because Devin left some marks on his body after training, didn't know that a woman had literally hit Hawk. Eli shook his head and said, I don't want to talk about it. It's all very humiliating. Can't be. Was it really a woman? Dash was surprised and mocked his friend's eye mark. Hawk, who felt increasingly angry, went to change without saying a word. But how can Dash let him go without knowing the whole story? Immediately after, he accompanied him and said, If it was a woman, my girlfriend can teach her a lesson. Hitting women when you're a man is not humiliating at all. Thanks, man, but I have it under control. Hawk thanked his friend for the attention but refused, thinking that his complaint against Sam LaRusso had been settled the night before. Dash then nodded and didn't insist. He looked around and asked, exactly, how many students are there? No more than 50 Miguel didn't know exactly how many students there were in Cobra Kai. Dash nodded. This was a good number considering the space, and it wasn't that large. Well, let's start the class. Hey, do you know what he's doing here in our dojo and dressed in Sakura Bushido's uniform? Hawk approached Miguel and asked. All Cobra Kai students noticed Dash, and seeing his uniform, they immediately knew he was from Sakura Bushido. But seeing that student near Lawrence, no one said anything and waited in silence. Lawrence's look deterred anyone who wanted to express their thoughts. He was very strict, and everyone respected him as an honorable sensei. A moment later, after everyone formed up, Chris shouted, Line up. Yes. I don't want to know exactly what your injuries mean. Everyone can have fights, but if it's a problem, you must tell me. Lawrence knew that fights were normal, so he didn't take Hawk's eye injury into account. 
Saying this, he took a step forward and said, Everyone will be wondering why someone from Sakura Bushido is here. Don't be surprised, but both dojos have reached an agreement to compete and exchange skills in a series of matches. Are we going to fight Sakura Bushido's dojo? That's incredible. I never thought this would be possible. Miguel smiled looking at Dash. He had never fought him, so he was more than excited to have a friendly match with the one considered the strongest in the valley. Now we know why he's here, Hawk said, very excited to have the opportunity to fight Dash. Lawrence, who looked at his enthusiastic students, shouted, silence. They might be excited, but if they don't concentrate, I'm sure many of you will get your butts kicked. Dash Hale, the star of Sakura Bushido, is a five-time champion, so very few have even been able to hurt him. Instead of thinking this is incredible, focus your thoughts to do your best. Yes sensei. Everyone was curious about Dash. Not seeing him in this year's tournament, they thought the chances of Miguel winning against him were doubtful. Let's start the class. Johnny didn't want to delay the class any longer, so he began with a simple warm-up. Out of respect, Dash stood to the side of Chris, who occasionally asked him some questions about what he thought of Cobra Kai, and the reason he didn't participate in this year's All-Valley Tournament. Dash was very straightforward with his answers. For some reason, he believed that things would get out of control for this dojo with the presence of this sensei, who had a strong character. He couldn't judge well what was good from bad, but as he had thought, things were becoming increasingly violent. Even though it's not my problem, should I interfere? Dash thought to himself. Sparring section. Lawrence shouted, looking at his students seriously. Yes. Everyone moved to the sides, there was more seriousness in each of their movements due to Dash's presence, so each of them was extremely quick in following Sensei Lawrence's orders. Watching the discipline in this dojo, Dash nodded approvingly, amazed that Lawrence, as a sensei, could have this coordination with his students. He might not know how other martial arts schools function, but not everyone could have this level of coeducation, because many don't take it as seriously. Thud. Point, back to your places. Look at each other, bow, fight. Dash, who was about to focus on the match, saw Daniel LaRusso enter the dojo violently without even greeting. Now what? Dash thought as he instinctively stood up. What the hell are you doing here? Johnny asked as he took a step forward to confront the upset Daniel who had invaded his dojo. Daniel looked at Johnny, anger was visible in his eyes as he asked, you should know. Take off your shoes if you step on the mat and respect my dojo. Johnny didn't let himself be intimidated by Daniel, now more than ever, he was very upset after recently finding out that his own son was living with him. Daniel walked on the mat and said, are you talking to me about respecting dojos after what you did to mine? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I didn't do anything to your dojo. Johnny said, looking confused at Daniel, who seemed to be blaming him for something. Daniel frowned and asked, you didn't hit my employee either, right? This time, Johnny didn't say anything because that was true. He wasn't afraid to admit things he did, but he didn't plan to take the blame for something he obviously didn't do. There must be a big misunderstanding. Why don't you solve it privately and stop causing a scene in front of the students? Dash took a step forward as a mediator of this conflict, which clearly would be solved by talking. Daniel looked at Dash with confusion and asked, what are you doing in this place? That's an interesting question. Why don't we talk privately since I also have something to tell you? Daniel pointed to Johnny's office, suggesting something more feasible. This is not related to karate. Stay out of it, Yung Hale. Yes, this is not your problem. Dash looked at both senseis and said, in the end, everything is related to karate, and you both know it well. Why don't we talk in private? I believe that two adults with reasoning can teach you how to solve problems, or can't they? No, I'm not disrespectful like others. Johnny pointed to his office and said, Unless you want to talk civilly, let's go to a private place. If you don't want to, then get out of here, or I'll have to throw you out. Daniel smiled as the anger faded from his face. Alright, I want to see how civilized you think you are. Seeing that both had made a wise decision, Dash took a step forward and said, Continue with the matches, you have a sensei who will be watching you. Chris smiled slightly but didn't say anything. He looked at his students and shouted, Line up, you'll get an explanation about what happened later. Yes, sensei. At that moment, Dash had entered the office and said, You might think your problems don't concern me, but believe me, they do if both valley dojos start a war that will be followed by their students. Daniel shook his head and said, We're not at war. Yes, there's no war with a single student dojo. Johnny said, looking at Daniel angrily. Dash looked at both senseis and said, Obviously, there's an explanation that Mr. LaRusso should have told first. Entering and causing a scandal in a dojo is a big lack of respect, because, as Mr. Lawrence said, it doesn't seem like you're aware of your anger. So, you could start with that point. My dojo, someone broke into my dojo in the middle of the night and destroyed everything. They're in the walls, broke windows, and painted the cars. I found out that there was a recent encounter with Robbie and some of your students, that immediately told me who it was. Daniel said, looking at Johnny with anger. 
Johnny obviously wasn't aware of what had happened. He didn't know that it happened to Daniel's dojo. But still, he asked, how are you so sure it was my dojo? Please, right after a fight they lost. It's obvious it's revenge. When one doesn't know how to lose, they always follow the examples of a sensei. Daniel looked at Johnny as if he were the one responsible for what happened. Dash understood what had happened now that it was told. Was anything stolen? I'm talking about a medal. You know that we as kids don't have the maturity of an adult, not in most cases. I know your story, I know the karate is not the problem, but you too once again. Things related to karate have been getting increasingly violent, since you two crossed paths again in the journey of life. Both of you are aware that this is wrong, and you must also be aware of who will continue their fight after this conversation. Dash's eyes focused on Cobra Kai's students. It's not me who starts Daniel fell silent, he didn't want his daughter to be involved in his fights, but that's exactly what was happening. Johnny, who was finding it increasingly difficult to control his students, didn't know what to say when bringing this up. Dash smiled and said, but if things started because of karate, you should solve it through karate. In the next tournament, bring out everything you have inside and solve your problems. If you ruin the reputation of karate that we have tried so hard to bring back, everyone will think that martial arts are a source of hatred. Remember, being understanding of your mistakes is accepting a better future. Dash, better than anyone, knew that no one was to blame. This was the result of a series of misunderstandings that could be resolved by talking. Johnny, still upset, said, yes, but we still don't know if it was my dojo's kids who did this. Then I have an idea for that. If so, let Cobra Kai's students fix the mess at Mr. LaRusso's dojo, and your students commit not to fight outside like gangs. Dash sighed, everything was so physical but at the same time complicated, so he said, if you keep causing problems, someone will end up very hurt. In the midst of a heated discussion, both senseis were forced to let go of part of their anger and frustration, because a kid was scolding them, which was not pleasant at all as adults. If karate was going to be like this, Dash would make sure to destroy both dojos in the tournament, to teach them what better things they should focus on before fighting like children. Of course, these were just Dash's thoughts, in reality, he wanted more competitiveness than unjustified hatred. When Daniel left, he looked at the students and said, we have sorted out the problems, your sensei will talk to you later. Dash, who looked at Mr. Johnny, said, I met your son Robbie a few days ago. Maybe I don't care about your relationship, but he was about to be stabbed by those he considered his friends until recently. Where? Johnny opened his eyes wide and stood up from his chair. Dash sighed and said, don't worry, he can handle them very well, and those guys went to prison what I mean is that there must be many things stuck in his life. As a son, I don't have the best relationship with my father, but we both reached a point where we tried to understand each other. You don't know anything, kid Johnny muttered, feeling devastated. Dash nodded, but still wanted to be honest with this man who seemed to need help, just as he needed help from Chosen. For a moment, I wanted to leave my parents' house, leave them behind, and never see them again for the rest of my life. I was angry, I threw a tantrum and went to Japan for a tournament after making a silly bet with my father. Johnny didn't believe what he had heard, it seemed impossible to imagine that knowing that now Dash had acted with a lot of maturity. But seeing that look on Dash's face, he knew he wasn't lying. When you're angry, you don't think things through, but when you're alone, you feel the truth's first hand. Don't think it's too late to fix things with your son, I'm totally sure Mr. LaRusso will help you with that if you ask him. Dash, looking again at Cobra Kai's students, said, on the other hand, I can see that some of your students are getting into more fights. They're losing control. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you need to control them. Both you and I need a guide, and there's no better guide for them than their sensei, I'll handle it. You don't have to worry Johnny knew perfectly well what had happened. He was about to give his students a good lesson, so he said, due to the recent problems, we'll postpone the matches between our dojos to the weekend. Dash nodded and said, thank you for listening to a kid's words. No, thank you for putting an old man on the right path said Johnny, watching Dash leave, who didn't plan to stay in the dojo anymore, given what had happened. Johnny, who needed some time to calm down, left the office, looked at his students, and shouted, gather in a circle. All those who were about to finish the practice matches gathered around the mat, and seeing their sensei's face, they knew that something had gone wrong. Some of you may be wondering what's happening, and you'll be as surprised as I was a few moments ago. Johnny looked at his students and said, it seems that some of you have taken a path of recklessness and dishonor, belittling the name of a rival dojo. I'm not here to make accusations, but to confront an uncomfortable truth that we must address as a united family. A dojo is not just a physical place where we train our bodies and minds, it's a community, a brotherhood based on mutual respect, and the constant pursuit of personal improvement. Disparaging another dojo not only reflects a lack of respect towards them, but also reflects a lack of respect towards yourselves and what we have built together. Everyone stayed silent, those who had participated in that act only lowered their gaze out of fear of being discovered. But Johnny, who hadn't finished, said, I don't train cowards. If you're going to fight, do it fairly, don't embarrass Cobra Kai. 
As a sensei, my duty is to guide you towards greatness, not only as martial artists, but as human beings. Greatness is not achieved by belittling others, it is achieved by surpassing our own limits, and respecting those who challenge us. I ask you to reflect on your actions and on the image you are projecting not only of yourselves, but also of this dojo that has been your home for learning and growth. Sighing, Johnny said, we're not a bunch of thugs or troublemakers, we are a family that supports each other, and rises together. I heard that something was also stolen, I want you to place it in the bathrooms when you think it's the right time. As an apology, I volunteer to clean Mr. LaRusso's dojo, and anyone who wants to make sure to come with me tomorrow. After saying that, Johnny sighed and said, go back home, the class is over, Johnny needed time to pray alone, and think about all the recent issues he had been involved in. He briefly recalled the conversation with Dash, and, upon learning that his son had almost been stabbed, wanted to know how he was. All that anger, resentment, and loneliness were erased by the desire to talk to his son. He tended to give up too quickly, but hearing the story of a student the same age as his son made him want to try again. Maybe my students don't understand me now, they are just kids, youngsters who have been hurt by life, and are only returning the hate they've received. But this doesn't have to continue, I must ensure that as their sensei. Empathy, patience, and understanding are the keys to reconciliation, and at the same time, they are fleeting moments that disappear due to the outcomes of one's actions, something Dash knew perfectly well as he acted as an intermediary. He just hoped that those two sensei, who were not to blame for their mistakes, could at least take a step forward and calm things down before everything crumbled. Seeing how far things had gone, all those involved in the destruction of Daniel's dojo felt scared. Eli gathered with his friends, he wanted to talk to them and said, I'll take responsibility if something is known. You went to that place that night because of me I'll really take the blame, you have nothing to worry about. No, friend, that's something we should all take responsibility for. I don't think that's what Mr. Lawrence is looking for. He wouldn't see culprits, he wants us not to do it again. Eli felt bad when he heard those words from his sensei. He thought he was doing the right thing as a Cobra Kai, but if this is considered cowardice, he prefers to forget his mistakes and do things better next time. Calm down, I'll take care of apologizing go home, I'll handle it. Eli didn't want anyone else to be blamed because of him, so he took the medal he had stolen from Lawrence's dojo, and walked to the bathroom. When he came out of the bathroom, Chris looked at Eli leaving and shook his head. It was indeed an act of cowardice, but reaching these extremes was shameful. Struck first Eli, walking back home, was surprised when something hit his shoulder. He turned around to find Dash coming out of his store with a bag full of ice cream popsicles. What are you doing? Eli asked, looking at Dash with confusion. Dash looked into Eli's eyes and said, I heard you fought with your best friend, you should consider apologizing to him. He deserved it I see, so now that he's not your friend, you won't care about him at all. What happened to you, buddy? I know it's not cool to be withdrawn, but it's not cool to be a jerk either. Will you stop with the tough guy act and all that? If the problem is Cobra Kai, you can come to Sakura Bushido. Dash knew Eli was going through a tough phase where he was letting out all his long buried anger, but as a friend, he didn't want him to be a jerk. Eli looked away, then said, mind your own business, I respect you, but don't cross the line. You have open doors at Sakura Bushido, free classes. Dash said, waving his hands. At that moment, Dash heard his cell phone vibrating, so he took it out and answered the call, which was from Devin. Are you taking me home as you promised? Wrong number. Dash, are you joking with me again? I don't speak English, you're speaking English, idiot. Yes, but British English, your jokes died on your trip to Japan, I'll be waiting. Well the next day, Johnny, who entered the dojo, found the medal that his students had stolen. After framing it in a frame, he prepared to go to LaRusso's house. But since it was too late, he went to find him at his workplace. You've got a minute. Johnny looked at Daniel, who was serving two customers, and spoke directly to him. Daniel, seeing Johnny, nearly exploded a vein on his forehead and said, Amanda, take care of these customers. Walking towards Johnny, Daniel asked, what are you doing here? I'm here to clear things up Johnny said very dryly, trying not to turn back and leave. Daniel shook his head and said, fine, follow me. He didn't want to make a scene in his store, so he led Johnny to a private place. He knew he also had to contribute, so he did his best right now. After entering the room, Johnny extended his hand and handed over the medal that his students had stolen. I wasn't aware, I'm really sincere in telling you this. It seems your son and my son fought with Cobra Kai students, they retaliated in a way I don't support, and as an apology, all my dojo's students will fix the damage caused to your dojo. No, I also went too far I didn't consider that you wouldn't be aware of what happened. In the end, they're just kids. Daniel opened the bag and found a glass frame where the metal he had cared so much about was in perfect condition. As for the dojo repairs, it's not necessary Johnny shook his head and said, even though I didn't delve into who did it, I want to teach them all a lesson. They wouldn't be like the Cobra Kai of the past, let me give them an important lesson. Okay. Daniel nodded and looked at Johnny with a calmer gaze. 
Before leaving, Johnny looked at Daniel and said, By the way, can you help me with Robbie to sort things out? Now that I live in your house, I don't want my responsibilities to be yours. You should have told me, you know he's still my son, I'll talk to him. I really regret not telling you I was very inconsiderate. I'll try to talk to him. Daniel could only apologize, in the end, he was more confused than he thought, so he needed time to process everything that had just happened. Come on, clean up all the trash. Johnny shouted as his students ran around picking up the remaining trash from the Mijito Dojo. If you feel embarrassed, imagine how I feel. Looking at his sweaty students, Johnny sighed and said, Do you know why I didn't look for culprits? No sensei. I didn't look for culprits because we are Cobra Kai, a family never abandons each other, and that's what we'll do from now on. I personally apologize to my greatest rival, it was disappointing, I felt suffocated, but if I could do it, so can you. Johnny raised his voice as he moved from side to side. Um, Sensei Lawrence, how do we lift this rock? Miguel asked, noticing they still couldn't lift a rock that belonged to the decorations of this place. Johnny frowned and asked, is that trash part of this dojo? Miguel sighed upon hearing those words from his sensei. Johnny might be trying to change, but those details are what revert their relationship with Daniel back to the beginning. I finished removing the paper from the trees, sensei. Eli shouted, who was working three times harder than the rest, giving everyone the idea of who the culprit was, but no one said anything. It was true that they were family, and now more than ever, they needed to be united. They were there for each other when there were problems, so they wouldn't separate after hearing their sensei's words, who had set aside his pride for them to understand the meaning of this. Mr. Lawrence, did you order a hydraulic lift? A man in a black shirt entered the yard after being guided by one of the boys who had gone for refreshments. Johnny nodded and said, I want to lift that trash and put it back in its place. The owner of this place tends to appreciate nonsensical things, and I figure he'll lose his mind if we throw that rock in the trash. The worker carrying the electric hydraulic lift looked at the rock and said, We just need to lift the rock a little to raise it, since we can't use a forklift, you can figure it out with this equipment. Alright, get to work, consider this as training. The worker thought this was child exploitation, but didn't voice his opinion after being stared at harshly by Johnny, who was teaching his students a lesson. Is this place even considered a dojo? Johnny asked as he touched his forehead, seeing how one of his students had torn some flowers from the garden, thinking it was grass. Miguel, who was still painting the damaged areas, looked at Johnny and said, Although this is extreme, I think everyone will understand the message, and that's unity. Aisha looked at Miguel and said, Not exactly. It was humiliating to discover that your students were practically criminals, but the hardest part was apologizing to someone you don't exactly get along with. Your relationship with Sam is in the trash, what the hell does that have to do with what I just said? Everyone looked at the guy who had just said that, and he muttered, I don't know what I just said, but everyone would be better off if you stopped pinpointing exactly what we all know. Shut up. Eli didn't want them to start fighting among themselves. We're here because of someone's damn madness. Why are we cleaning up all this trash? Miguel sighed, looked at the kids who were arguing, and said, fighting over this won't get us anywhere. You heard it from Mr. Lawrence, so consider this as training. Training you should consider your relationship with the enemy neutral, it's clear we won't be able to be on good terms with them. You guys better help the others lift the rock. Johnny shouted as he distributed water bottles among his students. In a completely different place, Daniel went to seek advice from Mr. Chosen on how he should act regarding the recent problem he had with Johnny, since he had no idea how to behave. Now knowing the whole story, as I can see between you and Johnny, you act as a cause effect, like a ping pong game where one acts and the other responds. Every act they commit has consequences, satisfying demand, in parallel, intensifying aggression towards others. After saying that, Chosen smiled slightly and said, and it's not just about them. Their students play a vital role. They're the result of a dispute that never reaches an agreement. Empathy, patience, and understanding are the keys to reconciliation, and at the same time, there are fleeting moments that disappear due to the results of their actions. That's true, but I can't improve things if Johnny doesn't cooperate. Daniel was helpless as he could say little in response to Chosen's words, who seemed to understand everything. This is exactly the problem. You say one thing, and Johnny says the opposite. Both believe there is only one version. Chosen smiled and said, The solution to the conflict between you two is not in defeating the other, but in finding reconciliation, a lesson that could well come from Miyagi Do. Thanks, Chosen, now I know what I can do the next day. Dash gathered the ten students from his dojo, who would participate in the friendly competition against Cobra Kai, as soon as classes ended. Are you all aware that we are going to a presentation of friendly matches? Dash asked the 10 students who were in a van modified to accommodate more than 10 people. Victor looked ahead and gave a thumbs up to indicate that he was aware. We're going to fight against Cobra Kai. Yes, we'll show them what real Sakura Bushido Karate is. We're going to break their bones. Devin, who was sitting at the front, shook her head at the enthusiastic boys and put on headphones to stay calm during the trip. 
There were three girls from Cobra Kai, and the rest were boys. In total, including Dash, there were only 10 selected students chosen randomly, and they would all be guided by Mr. Chosen. Seeing that everyone was aware, Dash sat next to Devon and rested his head on her shoulder, causing her to slightly open her eyes in surprise. Not even cats are this clingy. Is something going on? Devon asked, smiling at Dash. Dash thought that Devon's comment might be a compliment, but he didn't respond immediately. Instead, he took out his cell phone and started browsing social media. Technology had evolved a lot lately, and Dash could say that there was little difference from the time he died. At least now, cell phones were much better, and the internet and social media had gained popularity, making everything progress faster. I plan to get this tattoo, what do you think? Dash showed Devin the tattoo he wanted to get but was unsure about. Sure, it looked cool, but nowadays, having tattoos on the body was not normal, and many people might mistake you for an average delinquent. Devin became interested in this, but when she saw the tattoo, she fell silent. The tattoo Dash wanted to get was a western dragon that would cover his entire left arm, part of his chest where the dragon's head would be, and part of his neck just below the ear. To be honest, it looked incredible, but it was a decision that could only be made once in a lifetime, since it would cost more than money. That's why Devin thought about it. It's not that Dash would lose points in his appearance by having that tattoo, but it really was 10 times larger than the previous one. Have you been bored lately? Devin asked, looking directly at Dash. Dash smiled and said, not really, just thought it would look cool when I take off my shirt. Well. Devin thought about it and really believed that he would look great, but she wasn't sure she approved of something like that. Dash sighed, removed the cell phone from Devin's view, and said, I also consider that I should tell my parents about this, they should know before I do it, will there be any difference? Devin didn't believe that Dash wouldn't get the tattoo if his parents denied it. It will be a little different Dash hadn't thought about this, but Devin was right. As time passed, the distance to their destination became shorter, and after 10 short minutes, they had arrived at the Cobra Kai Dojo, where absolutely all its members were waiting. Keep your behavior in check because this is the first time Sakura Bushido has done something like this. You are representing not only our martial arts school, but also your classmates who didn't have the opportunity to come, Chosen said as he got off the van. After arriving, Dash stood up and was the first to get off, followed by Devin, Victor, and the rest of the students who showed no emotion on their faces. Everyone's personalities had completely changed. Those who had not participated in the Valley Tournament had come to this dojo to show that Sakura Bushido is not a simple school. Chosen, who reached the dojo entrance, soon saw Johnny and Kreese, both sensei of Cobra Kai, who approached immediately to greet them. Welcome, I hope you had a good trip here. Johnny said a bit nervously as he saw Chosen, who was someone different from Mr. Kin, whom he had met before. Chosen extended his hand and said, You must be Sensei Johnny, I had the opportunity to meet you through the words of Mr. Daniel. I believe there is something familiar that you and I have had with him. First, come in, our students are nervous about meeting their opponents in the matches, Chris said, not wanting to hear anything unrelated to karate, so he invited them inside. Dash, who was leading the students, soon reached the mat. They all took off their shoes in their respective places, and because they were dressed in their black uniforms, there was no need to change. Dash had recommended this because this dojo didn't have changing rooms. So, after knowing that, it was better for everyone to come prepared. Atenhut. Dash shouted as he stood in front of Cobra Kai's students, and after all Sakura Bushido's students heard his order, they all formed a line side by side. Dash, with a serious expression, said, salute. Shortly after, everyone bowed briefly as a greeting and, after doing so, they assumed a resting position. Chosen, who maintained his smile, said, thank you for your invitation, we'll be in your care. Cobra Kai, salute. Johnny didn't want to be intimidated by the good discipline of someone who would be his enemy today, so he immediately made his student salute too. Chris smiled and said, today we'll have a very important day. As you know, there will be 10 opponents with whom each of you will test your skills. The matches will end when the students of Sakura Bushido are defeated, or conversely, all of you are defeated. Each student from both dojos will fight until they are defeated. Any questions? No sensei. Chosen smiled and also said, regardless of the results, I hope each of you enjoys this exchange of skills between both friendly dojos. Yes sensei. Then, let's start with warm-ups, and in 10 minutes, we begin, said Johnny, who, although he remained serious, was really nervous. Victor was a 17-year-old boy who had joined Sakura Bushido, after they won their first championship in the All-Valley Tournament. Since then, he had trained and learned about unity, respect, and discipline. Like many others, he had participated in competitions, winning all except those where Dash participated. In the eyes of everyone, he was the second-best male fighter in Sakura Bushido. That's why today, being taken to this inter-school martial arts event, he was so excited that he wanted to shout, is this going to be our revenge? Victor's eyes were burning with excitement. Mateo beside him rolled his eyes and said, I heard many of the students here are idiots, that's precisely why we should wipe the floor with them. 
I don't like to say it, but Cobra Kai focuses on Miyagi-Do, and vice versa, when we are the real rivals to beat if they want to triumph in the valley. Liam, who was friendly, smiled with a bit of embarrassment as he spoke those words. Sophia, one of the three girls from Sakura Bushido, nodded upon hearing those words. Finally, you say something intelligent. That's right, they will all learn that we are the rivals to beat. Um, so we don't have to hold back, right? Paul, one of the guys from Sakura Bushido, asked. Devin nodded beside him, you shouldn't hold back, we must show authority, period. She had heard Dash's plan, and it was well thought out for what they wanted to achieve. According to her observation, if they don't demonstrate their true authority in this dojo, everyone will end up underestimating them. It would be much better to assert their authority. Tori, who was training, saw Devin among the crowd of Sakura Bushido students. As one of the few girls from Cobra Kai, she had been called to participate, even though she hadn't been training for long. But when she learned that Devin might be among the rival students, she got excited because she could finally thank her for taking her home that day. Also, she realized that someone had paid several months rent, something she needed to make sure to repay, since it was a considerable amount of money. You should go say hi before the fights begin. Everyone will get tense, and it might not look good if we get along with the enemy. Aisha on the side looked at Tori and understood what she wanted to do. Tori nodded, walked towards the Sakura Bushido students, and noticed Devin, who was warming up for the fights, realizing that someone was approaching. Hi, when I woke up, I wanted to call you, but I never got your number. Tori greeted Devin with a smile. Devin looked up and, upon seeing Tori, smiled too. I didn't expect things to get so crazy that day. How are you? I'm fine. By the way, about the money Tori wanted to mention the rent that Dash had paid, but Devin stopped her before she could finish speaking and said, Don't worry about that. There's no need to pay it back. Consider it a small gift. Tori smiled and said, that's even better than a gift. You saved me from that jerk, we had a chance to meet him, Dash even broke his nose, Devin briefly recalled those moments. Come on, let's finish the training. Johnny shouted, wanting the event to start before anything else happened. Tori, who wanted to keep talking to Devin, smiled importantly and said, we'll talk later. Sure. Devin, who now considered Tori a good girl, believed that both of them could get to know each other better, and could even become very good friends. Dash, who had returned from outside because he wanted to get water for everyone, looked at Devin, who was talking to Tori, so he didn't do anything flashy. Have you chosen the order already? Dash asked Victor, who was very excited. Mateo beside him nodded. First, Paul will go. Considering many things, we believe he's the best choice to go first. Are you okay with that Paul? Upon hearing Dash's question, Paul, who was a bit nervous, nodded and said, looking at everyone, I'll finish the weak ones. I won't disappoint you. You already have experience in how tournaments work, do your best. Dash nodded at Paul's confidence and looked at Chosen, who was waiting on the side. Alright, once the fight starts, the duels will be continuous. We're not here to hurt each other, but to learn and gain more experience. Chosen said as he looked at the students. First fighter from Sakura Bushido, Paul. Go and test this fight bird. Alright, look this way, Bo. Look at each other, Bo. Ready? Fight. You can do it bird. Bert didn't have high expectations for his strength and especially combat skills. But in front of his Cobra Kai friends, he couldn't let them be embarrassed to have him as a member, so he would do his best to at least put up a good fight. Do you really think you can take on my Cobra Kai guy? You believe that you dominate in the realm of karate, but you've only reopened for no more than a year, and haven't faced real fighters yet. Paul raised his guard, looked coldly at Bert, preparing for the fight. Bert felt strange, all the Cobra Kai students fell silent upon hearing these words that, though true, were hurtful. No one had focused on the fighters of Sakura Bushido because they had won the tournament, but seeing all these strong fighters made them realize that they had underestimated the true level of that martial arts school a bit. Now, facing Bert's attack, Paul's expression cooled even more. Without the need to dodge, he faced Bert's attack directly with his fist. Boom. A strong wave of force surged from the blow, causing Bert to recoil to the point that he almost went off the combat mat. Bert was recovering, but at that moment, a quick kick landed on his right shoulder, almost taking him out of the established combat boundaries. Everyone fell silent. They knew Bert was the weakest in terms of combat, but that was because he didn't have as big a body as others, giving him a disadvantage in strength. But seeing him lose without even being able to do anything surprised everyone, no one could react at the speed of combat, let alone do something against those attacks. Point. Both back to your positions. Ready. Fight. Donnie shouted without showing any emotion on his face. He knew exactly that many would get a beating, and this would make them focus more. Considering Sakura Bushido's combat level, this would let all Cobra Kai students know that they are not strong, but are still seeking true strength. Maybe winning that tournament was a good thing, but if they think they're on top just because of that, they're wrong. Paul smiled as he watched Bird recover, raised his hands, and as soon as it was announced that the fight would continue, he took a step forward. 
Bert, feeling embarrassed and very sore, thought he was doing things wrong, that he was ashamed in front of his peers, so regardless of anything, he went on the direct attack. But what he didn't know is that Paul, although he had been in Sakura Bushido for no more than a year, was learning from Chosen himself, so his skills in karate had advanced by leaps and bounds, with the true power of Miyagi-Do. Boom. 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 Dodging Bert's continuous blows, the moment he started an unrestrained attack, Paul switched to defense while patiently waiting for his opponent to tire, and at that moment, he would strike. Raising his eyebrows slightly, Paul was surprised by his opponent's resilience, but that was all. He couldn't worry too much about this person's karate level because he couldn't break through his defense. Having seen enough and knowing perfectly well that Bert's attack level had decreased, Paul positioned himself, and leaning slightly, his elbow hit Bert's stomach, who didn't expect Paul to make such a sudden move. Huff spitting out all the air from his stomach upon receiving the blow, Bert knew he had no chance against this opponent. Ouch. Bert, who fell to his knees while holding his stomach, tried to get up, but knowing that the result would be the same even if he got up, Johnny decided not to press him. Point, winner. I can continue, sensei. Bert said as he stood up. Johnny knew that his student wanted to continue, but if he fought again, it would be the same result because Paul's karate level was superior, and in physical terms, there was no comparison between the two fighters. You did well, take a little rest. Johnny said as he nodded to his student. He didn't want him to feel bad, but these results were expected from the beginning. Bert nodded, walked off the mat, and sat on the floor while holding his stomach. To be honest, he wanted to keep fighting, but his confidence had crumbled with those two points scored so easily without even being able to counterattack. What a shame Bert murmured, feeling embarrassed, but when he looked up, all his peers looked at him without any malice in their faces. To be honest, no one expected Bert to win the fight. What everyone expected from him was to fight as much as he could to learn more deeply about Sakura Bushido's karate. This was his victory, so no one except Kreese was angry with these results. Next, Nate, it's your turn. Johnny sent his weaker soldiers as cannon fodder, so that his stronger students would be ready for the real fight. The first five fights were truly a total loss for Cobra Kai, making everyone feel a bit depressed and ashamed of their poor performance. Oh my god, Kreese murmured as he saw each Cobra Kai student being defeated one after another. Hawk on the side muttered, even though I expected this, it's still very embarrassing. How can we look so weak? I hope Mitch can do something. Miguel tried not to take it too seriously, but seeing defeat after defeat was something that really didn't sit well with him. Seeing that Paul was tired, Chosen walked over to Johnny and asked, now that the best fights are coming, why don't we start changing students, so that all of Sakura Bushido's students can fight with Cobra Kai's? That sounds good, let's do that. Johnny didn't have the face to complain that Chosen was underestimating his students because so far, it was defeat after defeat. A few long minutes later winner, Mitch is the winner. Paul, who really wanted to leave because he was tired, bowed after losing and returned to his Sakura Bushido teammates, who nodded at him as he greeted them. You need to focus more on defense when we get back. You could have won if you weren't desperate to win. That guy has a more robust body, it was wise to think he would get tired faster, Devin said as Paul returned, leaving everyone in silence. Paul nodded silently, wiped off the sweat, and sighed for having lost before the changes were announced. A real shame, he just hoped not to have disappointed his teammates. He did well, just concentrate better next time and apply what Devin said, Dash praised Paul, who had really been putting in effort from the beginning. Yes. Chosen took a step forward and said, Alright, the first fights were impressive, but we'll change things up a bit. Each Sakura Bushido fighter will go once, and you too. You can fight someone who has already fought, or you can choose the next fighter. Johnny nodded and said, remember, you can only choose fighters who haven't defeated someone else, so you can choose from the next or one who has already won. Yes sensei. With everything clear, Chosen took a step forward and said, Oliver against Mitch. You know how this goes, 3 points for the winner. Ready? Attention, Bo, look at each other, Bo. Fight. Oliver was the last of Sakura Bushido's young promises. Liam, who had reached the final, was now a very strong warrior, so he was not at the levels Oliver and Paul were, but they were still the best of the young ones who would go far. I hope to see the best of you. Oliver looked at Mitch approaching and waved his hand. Now. As Mitch's voice faded away, Oliver's eyes narrowed. In just one step, he fiercely charged towards Mitch, who maintained a proud expression on his face for defeating Paul. Many people had classified Oliver as an ordinary guy, so his appearance was quite normal. He had brown hair, a bit tousled, and a pair of small eyes. Oliver was a short guy, everyone would think he could be easily defeated, but at that moment, they understood. As Mitch's attack approached, Oliver did not retreat. Better yet, to the crowd's astonishment, he took a step forward as his right hand quickly extended to deflect Mitch's fist. While Mitch's fist hit the air, he attacked Mitch's chest. Point. Damn. Mitch muttered, feeling a sharp pain in his chest. Now he looked at Oliver with a somewhat furious expression, and quickly raised his fists, waiting for the combat to restart. 
Chosen, who didn't want to delay the fight, said, ready. Fight. All letting out a thunderous roar, Mitch wanted to intimidate Oliver, and threw a punch directly at his chest. But in that instant, Oliver diverted that punch with an upward blow. Just as Mitch's punch was diverted, Oliver's body posture changed abruptly in his advance. He clenched his right hand and formed a fist, as soon as he approached, he attacked to land a punch on Mitch's chest again. In an instant, a powerful punch landed on Mitch's side, who couldn't react at that speed. Oliver wasn't powerful, he was just very fast, leaving Mitch out of the possibilities of defeating him. Point. You're very fast, but now I'll wait for you to come closer, Mitch said, looking directly into Oliver's eyes. Ready. Fight. Chosen shouted after seeing that both had had a few seconds to rest and prepare again. Mitch now wanted to maintain his posture, take control of the fight, and see how good Oliver was in the second round. But at that moment, unexpectedly, Oliver ran towards him, and in an instant, he initiated a series of powerful and fast attacks that overwhelmed his defense. Boom. 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 Mitch's problem was that he was slow, having a robust body, his speed wasn't much, and against Oliver, who was extremely fast, he had no chance. Looking at his opponent, Oliver feigned a move, and in a spin, his elbow landed forcefully on Mitch's stomach, who exclaimed in pain and anger at feeling the blow. Point. Winner, Oliver. Take a break, now let's go with female matches. Although Cobra Kai doesn't have many female fighters, they also have the right to learn, and what better way to learn, than facing the All-Valley champion, Devin Lee. Tori looked at Aisha and asked, how strong is Devin in sparring? She beat me. She's a four-time champion in different years at All-Valley. Considering she didn't participate in other tournaments due to medical issues, she could easily have the same titles as Dash, but considering the women we've seen, she surpasses them by far due to her kicks, Aisha had to admit that Devin was too strong. Tori got excited, it would be good learning to fight with her and asked, do you mind if I face her? Aisha shook her head and said, no, we'll be able to challenge her and many more when we visit Sakura Bushido, but don't get down if she beats you quickly. Not at all. Feeling bad for losing to someone much better is always a lesson, Tori said without any mental burden. She felt comfortable with Devin, so it would be an honor to lose to her. The matches continued to progress, and everyone watched as after a loss from Sakura Bushido, no other student fought again. After many random matches, it was time for the women. Aisha against Sophia. Sophia hadn't forgotten her defeat against Aisha, initially, she didn't regret it, but after that fight, she thought about many things she could do to improve, and she was truly getting more upset. But now that she could fight Aisha again, she was ready to take on all the advice she had been given before. Although you defeated me before, this time it won't be easy. Prepare yourself well, and don't underestimate me, Aisha. Sophia said with a very serious expression on her face. Hearing this, Aisha was a bit surprised but nodded. Alright, get ready too. I usually don't hold back in fights. Chosen smiled a little and said, Alright, ladies, three points for the winner. Ready. Attention, Bo, look at each other, Bo. Raising her palms, Sophia was filled with a unique aura of will and eagerness to start the fight. Fight. As Chosen's shout faded away, the mood in the Cobra Kai dojo soared because the female fights were about to begin. In a few minutes, everyone's mood improved, and they forgot about many devastating defeats they had just suffered. Listening to the start of the fight, Aisha smiled slightly as she ran forward. Her large body was full of power, and everyone knew that one of her punches was enough to knock many out. She forcefully hit the ground and sprang forward at a tremendous speed to face Sophia. Under this astonishing scene, Sophia tightened her expression, and her muscles tensed. She knew her opponent was very strong, a truly formidable person, and she needed to concentrate a lot to beat her without making a fatal mistake. Sophia initially wanted to attack, but seeing Aisha's initiative changed her plans. Watching the trajectory of the blows, she realized she could easily dodge them, and that's exactly what she did. Boom. 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 Skillfully avoiding the blows, her arm stretched agilely at a unique opportunity, and Sophia, who seized this chance, struck Aisha at a vital point Chosen had taught her. Ah. Chosen, who saw Aisha's left arm lose the power to support itself, shouted loudly, point. The point. But she barely touched Aisha. The Cobra Kai student cried out indignantly at this result. Idiot, look at Aisha's left arm, she can't move it. Is it broken? Not from what we see, but that girl named Sophia did something to disable her arm. Johnny frowned, he could clearly see how Sophia attacked a vital point on Aisha's arm, leaving her with no chance of moving her arm. Can you continue? Chosen knew exactly Aisha's condition, so he asked her first. Aisha waved her still numb arm and said, of course. Very well, ready. Fight. Aisha raised one of her arms and stayed on the defensive, at least until she could move her arm again. But at that moment, Sophia, who had the advantage, didn't want to lose it and quickly advanced, kicking Aisha's leg. Boom. This kick was impossible for the current Aisha to dodge, in fact, she couldn't dodge a kick. No point, continue. But Sophia didn't need a reminder, she immediately advanced and started exchanging blows with Aisha, who still hadn't recovered. Boom. 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 
In an instant, Sophia's arm moved agilely, and she attacked Aisha's stomach, who couldn't do anything about it. Boom. Ah. Point, Sophia wins. Bang to Aisha, Sophia walked back with her teammates. Tori looked at Aisha, who was already returning, and asked, What did she do to you? I don't know, but my right hand stopped responding until just now Aisha said, very confused about it. Having concluded that impressive match, everyone remained silent, deeply impressed by the extraordinary display of skills. However, there was little time for astonishment as the next bout left everyone even more thrilled. Devon against Tori. Chosen shouted, acknowledging the prolonged duration of the skill changes, and the numerous fighters yet to compete. Tori stepped onto the mat, walked in front of Devon, and said with a smile, Don't go too hard on me, champion. Remember, we're friends. Devon laughed in response and jokingly said, On the mat, friendships don't exist. But I can promise to be considerate. I'm not sure if I should be relieved about that. Although Tori had joined Cobra Kai only recently, she possessed certain fighting skills from before, making her not a novice like some who had recently joined. Josen smiled a bit and said, Alright, ladies, three points for the winner. Ready. Attention, Bo, face each other, Bo. After bowing to Tori Devon closed her eyes slightly, took a deep breath, and when she opened them, there was a fierceness evident in every small movement. Tori could see that intensity, she was very impressed by Devon's sudden change in attitude, but could understand it. Devon was a champion, something not to be underestimated, considering she had won many times and faced countless opponents. This fight would undoubtedly be a lot for Tori, but she liked challenges. Here I go. Ready. Tori took the lead instantly, initiating with a punch to Devon's stomach. However, just as the punch was about to land, Devon made a move. She extended both palms downward, absorbing the impact of the punch, and instantly clapped Tori on the chest, who had only one hand to defend. To everyone's surprise, Devon had landed a punch on Tori in a matter of seconds, showcasing her experience, combat skills, and those peculiar fist deflecting techniques seen only in Dash in her. Point. Tori stood there in disbelief, glanced at the referee, then at Johnny, who nodded, clarifying the rules of the tournament. This meant they didn't have to deliver knockout blows, but score points with effective strikes that could cause significant harm, if full force were applied. Chosen didn't make a mistake in awarding this point. After confirming that both were fine, he nodded and said, Alright, ready. Fight. Ready. Tori quickly advanced toward Devon with a straight kick, easily dodge. This time, Devon leaped without stopping, making it easy to evade the kicks. To everyone's surprise, Devon effortlessly dodged this impressive kick from Tori. Instead, Tori, who has shown she was no inexperienced girl, was kicked in the leg, causing her to lose balance. When did you learn to do that? This scene left everyone astonished. If it weren't for Devon's goodwill, that kick could have ended the match if it targeted Tori's body instead of her leg. But Devon, showing mercy, wouldn't allow herself to lose to Tori. She swiftly advanced, exchanged some blows while trying not to suppress her friend too much, who was still in the learning phase. Thud. 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 With a fierce expression on her face, Devon, who was about to throw a punch, surprised Tori, who stepped back to dodge. However, in that moment, Devon turned and threw a kick that landed in Tori's stomach. Thud. Point. After witnessing this, many Cobra Kai students, expecting something more impressive from Tori after her face-off with Miguel, were disappointed. However, she was facing the current All-Valley champion in the women's division. That kick was impressive. Tori got up from the floor, looked at Devon, but didn't say anything. Her expression conveyed a sense of helplessness. Facing someone so experienced for the first time in a tournament setting was not ideal. Ready. Fight. This time, Devon stayed still, raised her hands, and after Tori advanced, she made a quick forward movement. Thud. 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 Dodging and deflecting several attacks, Devon leaned her body to avoid Tori's remaining blows, sheltering her head, so that nothing could harm her. In an instant, she attacked the lower part of Tori's chest. Point Devon wins. Tori, touching the area of the hit, looked at Devon with a smile. It was a thrilling fight, and although she lost, she knew it was a learning experience. She said, that was a lot of adrenaline. Even though you didn't hit hard, it still hurts. Devon smiled and replied, believe me, it will hurt even more later. Observing the outcome of the match, Dash smiled proudly and muttered, that's my Devon. That was a good fight. Cobra Kai has some great fighters. After Devon's duel, the competition continued. The remaining matches were all quite flashy, but facing many of Sakura Bushido's top fighters, the outcome was obvious. Indeed, most were won quite easily, leaving a bitter taste in the competition. At one point, five more rounds concluded. As predicted, Sakura Bushido finished with all Cobra Kai fighters, except for two who had yet to compete. As all the matches were concluding, Hawk, who was the next fighter to go before Miguel, felt very excited. Hawk against Victor, step forward. Mr. Chosen announced after knowing who the last fighters were. Let the duel begin. Alright, guys, three points for the winner. Ready. Attention, Bo, face each other, Bo. Mr. Chosen said as he looked at both competitors. Fight. 
As they eyed each other, Victor's expression became deadly serious as he leaped forward. A devastating force surged from his muscles as he launched a kick. Just as his kick was about to connect with Hawk, he deflected it, making Victor growl, thinking he could score a point with that impressive kick. In an instant, it shifted to close combat, and the overwhelming force of Victor's attacks increased exponentially. While being assaulted by a series of rapid and powerful attacks, Hawk slightly furrowed his brow. He aligned his manicured fingers and, like a great spear, attacked directly between Victor's punches, trying to hit his body. But at that moment, before his fist reached Victor's body, Victor had launched a kick that ended up connecting with Hawk's side. Ah. Point. Chosen shouted as he separated the fighters. Hawk, holding his side, frowned, quickly compassed himself, and walked back to his place for the match to be resumed. Ready. Chosen looked at both fighters and said, fight. On the mat, both figures entwined as they vigorously fought and constantly exchanged blows with their fists and high kicks. Each strike was magnificent, intricate, and entirely legal. Dash, who do you think will win? Devin asked while watching the fight. Although it's a tough fight, if Hawk were less aggressive and focused more on connecting hits than causing damage, he would have a better chance in this fight. But there's nothing to consider right now, Dash said as he observed the match. In simple words, Victor would win without any trouble, simply because he was much better in combat and more focused than Hawk. Just as the intensity of the fight was increasing, Victor surprised Hawk with a quick kick, earning him another point. Point. Hawk clenched his fists, knowing there wasn't much difference in speed, but a significant difference in experience. He lacked a lot of experience to face fighters with rich combat experience. Ready. Fight. Chosen, after giving both fighters a breather, initiated the fight again. Ready. Filled with uncontrollable fury, Hawk began with quick kicks. Victor, who hit his opponent right where he wanted, smiled slightly. Holding the kick Hawk had thrown, he maneuvered with his right leg, and forcefully struck Hawk's chest. A loud sound echoed, and Hawk, who had been hit, fell to the ground. Not bad for having no more than a year of training. I can confidently say you have more talent than I do, Victor smiled as he extended his hand to Hawk, who was breathing with fatigue. Looking at Victor, Hawk extended his hand and said, I'll beat you next time. Victor nodded and said, I'll be waiting. Alright, as the current champion, it's a real fortune for Miguel to face Dash. This match will determine who is stronger and will resolve many of our doubts, Hawk said, so excited that he completely forgot about his own loss. Dash, in the distance, smiled. He really wanted to know at what level Miguel stood, and now he was about to find out. But as he was about to advance, Devon stopped him and began tying his long hair into a ponytail. His kicks are good, he's fast and skilled, so don't underestimate him, Devon whispered to Dash, who looked like a little kid about to play in the sandbox. Dash nodded, looked at Devon, and said, I'll be fine, your boyfriend has yet to experience defeat. Quite surprising, but remember that the only person who has beaten you is me, Devon smiled as she stepped back. Let's go, Dash, show him who the real champion is. Come on, Miguel, show him who the current champion is. Johnny was nervous. Although things had gone as he thought they would, he didn't know the result of the next match, because he wasn't familiar with Dash's fighting style, and didn't know what he was currently capable of. Approaching his sensei, Johnny asked, who do you think will win? Your student still has a long way to go if he wants to beat that guy. The kid from Sakura Bushido is currently unbeatable in his age group, Chris said without any doubt. For him, Dash was invincible, and that's something no one in their age could change. Johnny nodded, Dash had been a five-time champion of the All Valley, and had numerous championships to his name. Miguel had a strong rival ahead, so he had to do his best to demonstrate authority. Miguel, with an absolutely serious expression, looked at Dash, then said, You don't know how long I've been waiting for this. I like the confidence in your eyes, but remember exactly where you are positioned and whom you are facing. Dash's calm expression changed so much that he seemed to have turned into another person. His expression, personality, posture, and breath underwent changes in an instant, making Miguel nervous. The referee, Chosen, who was watching both of them, said, You know the drill, three points for the winner. Ready. Attention, Bo, face each other, Bo. Fight. Dash didn't want to wait for the match, he took a step forward and launched a fast direct attack to Miguel's face, who quickly retreated. Pum. In an instant, a powerful blow was received by Miguel's defense, and he immediately felt a numbing pain that made him change his expression. But it wasn't enough to stop him, he was excited because he was facing a powerful opponent, so he countered with a kick. Dash, keeping his eyes wide open, leaned, slid his body, and hit the kick holding Miguel's body, who, upon receiving the blow, fell to the ground. Ready. Miguel got up instantly, feeling very impressed that he had been knocked down without even giving him time to react. And just when he thought he would be fine, a kick landed on his shoulder, sending him directly off the mat. Point. You expose your weak points too much, you think you're fast, but you don't know that there are people even faster than you. Dash said as he returned to his position while raising his guard, something many had never seen before. 
Miguel shook his arms and said nothing. He wasn't used to Dash's martial arts, so he didn't exactly know how to defend himself. I must admit, that kick was amazing. Hawk, who didn't know how to react first, praised Dash's kick and then supported Miguel. Dash has been training and competing for over 5 years. Besides having more experience, he knows things we don't know, Bert said, sitting outside the mat. Tori, who had been impressed by Dash's kick, understood a bit more about him. There's no doubt that Miguel will have a tough time facing him. Do you know how many times he has lost? No one has beaten him, he remains undefeated since he started with martial arts. Aisha was well aware of Dash's fights as she was a bit of a fan before starting training. Looking at each other defiantly, both fighters were ready to continue the match that had only just begun. Ready. Fight. At this point, Miguel didn't want to fight defensively, so he could only confront Dash directly. Pump. 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 With a serene expression on his face, Dash's hands clenched into fists. Immediately after, a series of crisp sounds echoed from the center of the mat. One after another, around nine consecutive hits were heard. Eight hits that were aimed at specific points on Miguel's body. After witnessing this, many people who were watching the match and expecting something evenly matched were very alarmed. They never expected Dash to have this level of combat, crushing any attempt by Miguel to get close. This guy, to think he has progressed so much Johnny was also very amazed by Dash's rich combat experience. However, shortly after, a worried expression appeared on his face, as he saw Miguel desperate to do something in this match. Yes, not bad Chris knew that with Cobra Kai's current skills, they couldn't do anything, but at least this would give them a good warning to train more seriously. It was shameful to see every day how all the kids thought this was a game, something they had won. But now that they were tasting the dirt, he hoped they either worked harder or left Cobra Kai, because these results had been humiliating. Miguel is the best potential kid in all of Cobra Kai, possibly not inferior to that guy called Dash. But we both know that Miguel lacks experience, battle wisdom, and combat perception. That's only gained by having good concentration, something that now, with the love issue, has your student in worse conditions, a real shame, Chris said, looking at Johnny, who didn't say anything about it. Johnny couldn't say much, but still thought, at least he'll taste defeat. It's better now in a friendly match than in a tournament. Hum. Even so, just as Johnny's thoughts faded, another clear crisp hit reverberated in the air. At that moment, everyone in the Cobra Kai dojo fell silent. Miguel, who was putting up a good fight, was being slowly suppressed. The pinnacle of youth martial arts was being shown by Dash, who wasn't even exerting himself in this fight. Ready. Miguel jumped to attack with a kick, but this kick was dodged by Dash, who dropped his body backward, and, after touching the ground, immediately jumped forward. Everyone turned to see Dash, who had effortlessly risen from the ground, and at that moment, they could see calmness on his face. Then they looked at Miguel and could see desperation on his face. Don't lose focus, Miguel. Donny shouted as he watched Miguel's desperate attacks that weren't getting anywhere in the match. Chosen, who was watching the match, thought, I know the karate, but they won't be able to win against Miyagi-do, there's no chance with Dash's experience. Looking at Dash standing in a corner of the mat, Miguel looked at his opponent with a serious expression. He had completely underestimated Dash, he thought he was close to his combat level, but now he discovered that wasn't true. I really see it difficult to win Miguel found it challenging to defeat Dash in this skill exchange, he truly felt Dash's karate as an insurmountable wall. But even if victory seemed elusive, Miguel would never give up, especially against a powerful opponent. Hum. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, with great momentum, Miguel engaged in a close quarters fist fight against Dash, who stood firm, deflecting attacks with techniques taught by Mr. Han, who had briefly taught him his kung fu. In just an instant, a tremendous number of blows were being exchanged, and everyone didn't know exactly which side was connecting more hits, but one thing was certain neither was backing down. Dash remained calm, occasionally lightly striking Miguel's vital points, causing him to reduce the punches he was throwing without stopping for a second. Pum. But seeing that Dash had thrown Miguel backward with a slap that hit his chest, the crowd surrounding the match exclaimed in astonishment. Those who hadn't seen Dash's skills but were aware of Miguel's had their mouths open, clearly unable to believe there was so much difference between them. Miguel wanted to keep advancing, but seeing his pained expression, Chosen stopped him and shouted, Point, return to your place. In front of Dash, Miguel clearly stepped back, annoyed that he couldn't dodge that blow that he clearly saw. Let's go, friends, let's have some fun. Dash never underestimated Miguel for a moment, but he knew perfectly well that his level was much superior to that of his opponent. He might be a real talent, but he still had a long way to go if he wanted to face him. Miguel didn't understand many important aspects of a fight, his head was boiling, and his thoughts weren't in the present. Therefore, Dash, who was interested in the match, lost the desire to continue testing Miguel. Ready. Chosen looked at both fighters, and knowing they could continue, he shouted, fight. Come on, Miguel. You can do it. Devin looked at the excited Cobra Kai kids but didn't say anything. 
the level of karate fights couldn't be compared to kung fu fights, where the intensity was much higher, due to the diversity of strikes that could be executed. The result is decided, it was a good fight Devon said, smiling slightly as she saw Dash enjoying himself. She could understand that both were friends, but right now, Miguel was going through a lot of teenage problems. It was normal and at the same time absurd, but she understood that not everyone had the same level of maturity as that of a reasonable person. Victor, on the side, whispered, many don't know, but Dash is still the true dragon warrior. Yer. Miguel shouted as he attacked Dash with a quick kick. Thud. 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 Each attack brought Miguel closer to forcing Dash to fight with all his might, but in the end, there was a gigantic step he couldn't overcome. In the next moment, they both practically launched themselves simultaneously, with vigorous movements and truly formidable strength. The force used was enough to defeat anyone in the vicinity, but not someone like them. Here. Miguel advanced vigorously, but no matter how magnificent he was, he couldn't understand why he couldn't defeat Dash. With enough strength to defeat anyone, two fists, one from the left, the other from the right, both sought to hit Dash's head, who calmly dodged all the attacks. When the two made their move, they showed almost perfect coordination. This offensive that approached from all directions was difficult to predict for defense. Dash was focused, watching how Miguel attacked, with excitement bubbling inside him as, with each attack, Miguel surpassed his expectations. His right hand signed a movement while his left completed it to defend against the approaching blows. Thud. Thud. When his fist and palm collided with Miguel's defense and body, a loud sound was heard, but this time Dash could see that his opponent didn't retreat. Good Dash stepped back one pace, and immediately launched a powerful kick that hit Miguel's leg, but he didn't step back, and instead counter-attacked. Here. Thud. From the previous exchange, Miguel knew Dash was very strong, so he would give everything he had in this moment, and retreating was not in his plans. Miguel's martial arts were good, but he lacked battle intuition, so Dash knew perfectly well what his opponent was opening next, and took advantage of it to make it clear. When a fist approached Dash faster and faster, this vicious movement aiming to end the fight in this round, Dash felt even more excited. However, his state became more alert, and his defensive posture changed instantly to an offensive one. Thud. 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 Without giving Miguel time to react, his punches that were directed towards the same direction, became fiercer with each passing moment. In just 10 exchanges of blows, Dash's offensive ended up overwhelming Miguel's defense, who was very desperate to form a defense and at times seemed like he was about to give up. Under the astonished looks of the crowd, with tremendous explosive speed, Dash's fist struck Miguel's stomach, whom Dash had previously diverted both arms with a defensive move, and in an instant, his punch connected. A tremendous non-lethal force hit Miguel's stomach, making him fall to his knees due to lack of air, and finally, he couldn't continue fighting. Ah. Seeing Dash, it had knocked Miguel down with a punch, the surrounding crowd began to applaud, somewhat disappointed with this result. Those who had known Dash before were very surprised that he was so tough in fights, others saw him as someone to beat. Chosen was equally surprised by the strength Dash had shown. After a short time, he finally opened his mouth and announced the results. Dash Hale is the winner. The members of Sakura Bushido exploded with applause and cheers as they congratulated the two who had fought admirably. Dash walked towards Miguel and said, That's why I told you to stay away from women, they have you all messed up, buddy. Young Miguel accepted Dash's hand, surprised that he perfectly understood what he was thinking. It was a good fight, we'll talk when you calm down, Dash said as he let Miguel compose himself. Not everyone was like him, many, still with adrenaline in their bodies, were violent, but that's normal and something that no one should take into account. Watching Dash's back, Miguel clenched his fists because he now knew that if Dash had participated in the All-Valley Tournament, he couldn't have won. Am I a fate champion? Miguel thought as he returned to his fellow students. Alright, rest, guys, Chosen said as he walked off the mat to congratulate his students. Johnny was about to say something, but at that moment, the landline rang, and he had to rush back to the office to answer. If it's not important, call back later Johnny didn't have time for a call, but after knowing who was calling, he stayed silent and said, tell me, how is he? Of course, I can go, I'll travel right away, so I'll get there as soon as possible, Johnny said before hanging up the call. It turned out that his friend was seriously ill, so it was necessary to visit him because no one knew how much longer he would last. Walking outside, he approached Sensei Chosen and asked, Can we talk in private, Sensei Chosen? Is something important happening, Sensei Lawrence? Chosen asked when called to speak in private. Johnny didn't know how to say it, but after learning that his close friend was seriously ill and it was necessary to visit him urgently, he had no choice but to go as soon as possible. Therefore, he couldn't proceed with the skill exchange at Sakura Bushido Dojo, and that was truly regrettable. I've got some major issues I need to attend to right away, they are of utmost urgency, so I won't be around for a few days, Lauren said, looking at Chosen, who had taken a seat. Understanding what Johnny wanted to convey, Chosen, who could see the concerns on his face, nodded without saying a word. 
He looked ahead and said, The kids are excited to know about Sakura Bushido, and since you won't be here to guide them, why not let them stay at Sakura Bushido with their sensei, and they can interact more with each other. That's, Johnny thought it was a lot to ask, considering that the Cobra Kai students were not Sakura Bushido's students. Josen reassured Johnny and said, Of course, Sensei Chris can accompany them and learn more about us. It would be beneficial to have students from other dojos with us, and we won't charge them. I'll talk to Chris, I'll give you an answer in a few minutes, Johnny said, still unsure of what to do. That's your decision, of course. Choose what you believe is most convenient, Chosen said, getting up. After bowing slightly, he left the room, leaving Johnny alone, lost in his thoughts. After classes ended, Johnny stood in front of everyone and said, I'm proud of all of you, we've exchanged good teachings. Now, theoretically, we should have classes of Sakura Bushido, but I ran into a problem, so Sakura Bushido will have its doors open for you. Take advantage of the teachings in that place. Aisha, who was among the crowd, asked, Does that mean we'll be at Sakura Bushido until you come back? Chris shook his head and said, We'll be visiting them, but you'll also fight what the men learn from them. You still have a long way to go if you want to be true fighters, so I'll take you there, and we'll all learn from each other. In short, Sakura Bushido would have its doors open to Cobra Kai, who would go there to train and learn. This was while Johnny urgently left to visit his friend who should be in critical condition. Is that good or bad? Hawk thought all of this sounded incredible. Johnny, who wanted to leave immediately, said, Well, good job, return safely home. Yes sensei. Seeing that everyone was gathering their belongings, Chosen also returned to the exit after bidding farewell. Well, guys, listen up. Dash, who had changed into his regular clothes, looked at everyone and shouted, I booked a restaurant so we can all go eat. That will be my treat for all of you, so feel free to come. Woo. There were dozens of exclamations, and everyone got excited to hear Dash's words, who had invited them to dinner. It wasn't common for them to have this kind of gathering because many preferred to spend their money on other things. So, after learning they were invited to dinner, everyone headed to the meeting place. Are we going now? Dash asked, looking at Devin, who had returned. Devin nodded, looked at Dash's car, which had been parked outside the dojo, and smiled slightly. Then she asked, how come I suddenly see your car outside the dojo? Dash smiled slightly and arrogantly said, I'm a magician, I just asked a guy from Sakura Bushido, to do me a favor and bring it, and in return, I invited him to dinner tonight. Then let's go. Tori, who was watching the Sakura Bushido guys leave the dojo, approached Devin and said, I won't be able to go, I have to go to work. Devin understood Tori's financial situation, so she just nodded and said, Come on then, we can drop you off at work. Tori smiled but ultimately refused. It's not necessary, I don't want to bother you. Dash, who had come out, waved his hand from the car and said, It's not a bother, come on, we'll take you. Devin continued to smile and said, Let's go, we might be late. With that said, Tori was reluctantly taken by Dash and Devin, who had no problem doing it. For the car they were traveling in was the same as Dash's, they had to move the seat to accommodate one more person, which was a minor issue, so Dash was planning to get a new car. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.